group uh, going to be uh, facing each other at the same time. And uh, I am looking forward to this. Uh, I'm looking forward to... This is the closest group, uh, and I think this is one that's got... Uh, well, in all fairness, the group of death is very close as well. We were looking at that last night, how that can still go any which way. But this group uh, is also very, very close. Uh, lots of uh, different uh, ways that this can go with people finishing top, uh, second, getting knocked out. So uh, I am very much looking forward to seeing how it plays out. I'm just going to uh, bring up the group, actually, uh, and see what the current standings look like so that we can just uh, be on the same page. So currently, uh, Sweden are top. Uh, so Sweden are top. They've played two. They've won one and drawn one. So they've got four points. Uh, Slovakia are second. Uh, they're on three points. Spain are third. And they're on two points. And uh, Poland are bottom. Now, if Spain lose today, I think they're out. Right? If Spain lose today, they could still finish third. But I don't think two points is going to be enough for the third place team. Um, we know there's teams that have got three points, four points that are in that third place. So I think if Spain lose, they've managed to get tr two draws, Spain, so far. They, uh, they've they been quite frustrating to watch. They absolutely dominate games. They dominate possession, but they're just not able to find an end product. Um, and it was kind of similar with their qualifying as well. Like Spain still remind me of the great team that they were. And they were one of the great teams. Uh, they still remind me of that, but they're just missing an end product. Um, they have so much possession. They build up and they create chances. Um, you know, they camp out in their uh, opponent's half, but they just cannot seem to find that spark, to find that way through. And as a result, they have uh, two draws, uh, one goal for and one goal against in two games. So... Yeah, it's been uh, it's been difficult for Spain, um, and it could get even worse if they lose here today. So uh, Slovakia versus Spain. If Spain go out, that will be the biggest nation to be eliminated at the Euros so far. Uh, so if Spain go out, that will be absolutely huge. There is still a way for um, Spain to get into the top two. The, I don't think there's a way. No, there is a way that Spain could actually still win the group. If Poland win and Spain win today, Spain top the group. So Spain could still finish top. They could go out. They could come second. They could top the group. Um, like, it's literally all to play for. So both games are going to be very, very exciting. Uh, Poland won. Uh, Sweden won. I need to just change this at the bottom. Uh, hello, by the way, to everyone that's joining us. So, yeah, we do have Poland and Sweden. Uh, Poland are playing at the moment. Well, not at the moment, but in a bit. And they are going to uh, try to go for the win as well. I mean, all of these groups need the win. You could say Sweden might be able to get away with the draw. Uh, Slovakia might be able to get away with the draw. But I don't think they're going to look to risk it to be honest i think all four teams are going to go for wins and uh, as we said there's lots of different combinations that can happen uh with these uh games and how the league tables uh finish up good news is we've got team news coming through i've just noticed that so let's bring that on screen uh, hello to uh, everyone that's in the chat by the way so uh, uh obviously slovakia um, not a, a team that's full of like big names and star power and all that kind of stuff. Um, they're a team that are uh, pretty solid, um, pretty basic, uh, but they've got some decent players. Um, obviously, uh, uh, Dubravka in goal is a fantastic player. Um, and uh, Hamzik in number 17 role in that uh, kind of number 10 uh, position. Um, is a really good playmaker. Uh, Skriniar at the back as well, number 14. So they've got a pretty solid spine, uh, in all fairness. But, um, yeah, not the not the strongest of uh, squads. But for some reason, they're always a team that tend to be there or thereabouts. So, um, 
yeah, this is going to be tricky for Spain. Because Spain are struggling to find an end product, um, it's, it's going to be a little bit tricky for them to get goals. Um, in all fairness, it's tricky for uh, Slovakia to get goals as well. I'm just looking at their qualifying. And uh, their top goal scorers uh, both scored three goals. So there's not really like an out-and-out goal-scoring machine uh, that uh, Slovakia has got or Spain. For that, uh, for that manner. So there's the Slovakia team. Uh, this is the uh, Spanish uh, team. So uh, obviously you'd imagine it's as full strength as can be. Because uh, Spain are currently on the verge of going out. So uh, we've got Simon in uh, goal. We've got Alba. Uh, obviously we've got uh, Laporte. Um, we've got uh, uh, Matret. Try to write these down whilst I'm seeing them so that I can actually tweet them out. Matrat, we've got uh, Aspilaqueta. Aspilaqueta. We've got Lopez. We've got Busquets. Uh, Koke. Uh, Marino, it's pretty much a team that you would have expected, actually. I'm not seeing too many surprises here. The only thing I'm not seeing is I'm not seeing Pau Torres. I'm not seeing Pau Torres, and I'm not seeing uh, Ferran uh, Torres either. So, looks like both of the uh, Torres players are missing from this side. And, uh, honestly, I think I've got both in my dream team, my fantasy dream team. So, that is a little bit frustrating. But, uh, yes, uh, that is the Spanish uh, team. Uh, Rafi says, I'm going to watch the Poland-Sweden game. Well, I'm going to be keeping an eye on both, bud. I'm gonna, I am going to be keeping an eye on both. Um, I, I like this group. I like close groups. No one's really won anything yet. No one's really gone out yet. Anything could happen by the end. You would think that... You would think that Sweden and Poland would probably draw. I will be surprised if Poland win that match. Um, I mean, they're going to go for it. And they've got Lewandowski, who's one of the world's great strikers. But uh, I will be surprised if Poland win that match. So Sweden win or draw, I think, is most likely. Uh, Spain, it's so hard because you look at this game and go, yeah, Spain will win this easy. But they're not, they're not the same Spain. That we all know and love. Uh, they, I mean, like, just look at some of those players on the pitch. I mean, we are not talking Xavi, Iniesta. Do you know what I mean? We're just not talking those kind of names. So they they really have uh, fallen away a little bit, Spain. This is a, this is a different Spain now. Um, this is a Spain that, you know, is rebuilding, if you will. Um, and, you know, two draws in this group um, is not a good showing. I mean, this isn't the easiest group by any means. Poland always give you a tricky game. Sweden obviously did well at the World Cup. Um, England uh, playing them, I think it was the quarterfinals of the World Cup. So Sweden getting to the quarterfinals of the World Cup. Um, Slovakia, always tricky. They're, they're solid, just not spectacular. But they're always going to be tricky. So it's not the easiest of groups. But this is this is a Spanish team that... You know, 10 years ago, were absolutely destroying the world. They didn't just destroy the world. They reinvented the world of football. Like, they are they are so critical to where football is now. Like, I don't think football would be where it is now if it wasn't for Spain. Like, that, that Spanish team from 2008 uh, really did change football. Really changed football. Because of how they were passing and the way that other teams had to approach them and... Um, you know, tiki tacky and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I kind of feel that this is uh, should be a straightforward win for Spain, but it is a different Spain, and uh, they could get another draw here. Uh, the reason that we're watching this game is because this has still got probably more big names than Poland and Sweden. Uh, Poland has got obviously Lewandowski. A lot of people are going to want to watch that. Um, I'd imagine that Poland will get a lot of support as well. Certainly here in the UK, there's a lot of Polish people over here. Um, and uh, I'm, I should imagine that uh, that Poland game will get a lot of uh, 
views and a lot of interest and a lot of support. And I really hope they do it. I, I'm, as I said, I've been to Poland a few times and I do love Poland. Um, so I really hope that Poland can get through. But um, it's going to be a struggle against Sweden. As we said, they're a very good team. Uh, Rafi said, will you do a watch long of the EPL this coming season? Uh, I don't think so, but uh, just because, I mean, I have really enjoyed doing the football, but we're not re we're not a football channel. So it it's it's difficult because, like, how do you, how would you, how do you cover that? I think if you was to cover it, you have to be like at one of the fan channels where they just watch one particular team or something along those lines. Um Trying to trying to cover the, I don't know how I don't. Oh, I suppose you could cover them all, I suppose, on like a Saturday or so. I don't know. I don't know. At the moment, I don't have plans to do anything, but I have really enjoyed watching football and talking about something different. Uh, really have enjoyed kind of getting like seeing the community as well, getting its teeth into something else. So yeah, it's been really good. Uh, New Zealand are 33 for one with a target of 139 in less than 40 overs. We will get a winner, says Adil. Yeah, that uh, Test Cricket final is looking quite tasty, isn't it? Very tasty. 40 overs left. And, um, I mean, New Zealand just need to go about their business, really. You know, just don't need to panic. They've got plenty of overs. They just can't give away wickets. Exciting, though. Because if they lose one, you think they'll lose two, and it could all start crumbling down for New Zealand. Um, they they we, they've buckled before, so yeah, it's a good game. Hasib said, "Days I was at work and I was thinking, when WWE want to take the title off Brock, why do they always do it with him getting squashed?" <clears throat> I honestly don't know, to be honest. I'd uh, I'd have to go back and try and remember all of Brock's title uh, defeats. To see if that that holds up, um, I don't know. He lost it to Seth, didn't he? I don't think he got squashed in that one. Uh, who's going to win this group? Says uh, Vincent. Uh, who's going to win this group? I think. Would it surprise anyone if Spain turn up today? If Spain turn up today, would anyone be surprised? If to tell the truth, even if Spain win here, if Sweden get a. If Sweden gets a draw, that might be enough. I could see Spain winning this. I could see Spain winning here. Sweden and Poland is a draw, and Spain top the group. Uh, they, do you know what I mean? They, they've gone the hard way round, but they finally get there in the end. So uh, um, I could see that happening. I could see Spain top in the group. Sweden second, Slovakia third, and sadly Poland eliminated. James Kenny said, "Days, can you download Kashu Runners? Sounds that sounds amazing. That, that sounds absolutely amazing. I will definitely get on that. Uh, As P is the only good Spanish player. Also, PSG can do one outbid in every club by doubling wages. Uh, Hakimi gone, but we move. Uh, Days, is it true if Slovakia lose, Ukraine will progress?" If Slovakia lose, Ukraine will progress. Uh, if Slovakia lose... No, that can't be true. But I don't see how Slovakia right now are in second. So if Slovakia lose, they stay on three points. If Slovakia lose, Ukraine progress... Oh, hang on, this is quite interesting. You've given me something to think about here. If Slovakia lose, Ukraine progress. So, Slovakia are currently second. So, they're second. They are on goals for, goals against. So, they've scored two goals. Their goal difference is currently zero. And they're on three points. So, if they lose to Spain, Spain would get five points they would go up that would knock them to there right right yeah i mean to be honest it's going to be a little bit tricky to work that out there could be some truth to it because right now all of the third place teams are looking 
to see who's going to go through. The, the the six groups and four of the third place teams go through. So if Slovakia lose, that would mean Spain win. So Spain go to five points. Slovakia would drop into third place. And I'm guessing Ukraine have probably got a better goal difference. So that that would that would probably make sense. That would probably make sense. Oh man, this third place stuff is so so confusing. So confusing. Uh Days, who's your favourite English player of all time? Um That's a really great question, you know. That's a really great question because I, I've got lots that come to mind. I mean, like Rooney, you know, was so important for us for so long. Shearer, you know, what he did during Euro 96 was incredible. Um, thinking about Gerrard and Lampard and Beckham and Scholes and Terry and Ferdinand and Ashley Cole was amazing. Absolutely amazing. Unsung hero at left back. Had that position on lockdown for years and years and years. Obviously, Gary Neville did well. But then, like, you've got this team now, and they've got some very exciting players. So, uh, if, I, if I could only choose one, if I could only choose one, it might be... Oh, you got Lineker. I'm thinking back, like, Lineker and Gaza and Butcher and... And then back to the 66 team, maybe you got to go somewhere like Bobby Moore. Maybe you got to go Bobby Moore. Bobby Moore, England win the World Cup 66. What a player he was. Uh, the only thing was, because it was so before my time, I haven't seen m m much of his, like many of his games. But he's a legend. We won the World Cup. He was the captain. The iconic image of him holding up the uh, World Cup. Um might have to go Bobby Moore or, or Jeff Hurst for scoring the hat trick in the final. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, it'd probably have to be someone from 66 because it's our greatest achievement. So might have to go with one of them. But I think for people that I watched, probably Alan Shearer. Bobby Charlton says David. Yeah, good shout. Good shout. Uh, Rage Kid said, if Spain doesn't hit anything today, I'm going to have to laugh. <laughs> Tall Paul says, Defo Bobby Moore. Uh, James Kenny says, Days, don't forget the DLC to the roasted and salted cashews. You get a chance for the golden peanut. I'm all over it, bud. I'm all over it. Uh, Connor Spain, shout out to you. Supporting your team. Uh, Michael Owen and Heskey, says uh, Robbie. Lauren said, I've got Lewandowski uh, as the top goal scorer for this tournament. Yeah, well, Lewandowski, absolutely fantastic player. And uh, he did score the other day. Um, you know, Poland getting a draw, I think it was. So, uh, yeah, very, very uh, influential uh, player. One of the best players at this tournament. But it's a little bit like Harry Kane. If you can't get good, consistent service to him, it's, it's always going to be a bit of a problem. Uh, for him to, uh, you know, get goals and have the impact that he can have. I do feel sorry for him. If he had better support, like, he would just be absolutely smashing them in. You put Lewandowski in that Italian team or in the Belgian team and be scary. Uh, David Seaman says uh, Jack Griffith. Yeah, I, that's a good shout. Uh, he was so... The only problem with uh, David Seaman for me was there was just a couple of moments. That Ronaldo one in particular... Where, you know, he gets uh, lobbed from, like, the halfway line uh, when we played Brazil. I remember we drew Brazil and uh, we were none of us were excited for the game. I can't remember if it was... It, well, it must have been World Cup, mustn't it? It must have been World Cup 2000 and... What would it have been? 2002? 2000... Yeah, it must have been 2002. World Cup 2002. And uh, he gets lobbed by... Uh, Ronaldinho like that that broke my heart that's the kind of goal that you look at and you go oh I get that I get that you can get caught but broke my heart and that's uh I, I met David Seaman though and he's a really really nice guy it's just one of them things that happens but I mean there's good chance we would have lost anyway you know but that one stung
I was at the age, do you know when you're quite young? Not quite young, but, you know, you're in your teens or whatever. And, like, it just, it, it hurts when they when they go out. I saw, um, I saw a young lad crying his eyes out when Scotland went out. Saw quite a few, actually. And, like, having to be consoled by their parents and whatever. And it's like, yeah, been there. Been there. I think that the one of the worst ones for me when England got knocked out was... I think it was like Euro... I'll have to... I thought... Let's have a look. Euro 2000, I think it was. Let's have a look at Euro 2000. Euro 2000 was won by the French. So, Euro 2000. England got... Why did England get... I don't think England even got out of the group, did they? Let's have a look. England... Yeah... England uh, beat Germany 1-0 at Euro 2000 and lost to Romania. Yeah, England lost to Romania. I remember watching that England-Romania game. Uh, England-Romania, the 20th of June 2000, so that's 21 years ago. I remember being in a pub with a friend and um, England had beaten Germany. Um, we'd lost to Portugal, we'd beaten Germany, we needed to get a result against Romania, and you would expect us to get a result against Romania, and, uh, it was, we lost 3-2 to Romania, 89th minute penalty, 89th minute penalty, and, uh, absolute heartbreak, it was horrific, England, who in 96 had got to the semi-finals, of uh, the Euros, and in uh, 98 had done, you know, fairly well in the World Cup, went out to Argentina, that Michael Owen goal, all that kind of stuff, and then, like, you go into Euro 2000 with a bit of optimism, our striking force, our team was great, we had uh, McManaman, Skulls coming through, you know, I think Beckham would have been playing by that point, uh, up front we would have had Owen in his prime, Shearer, Still uh, firing them in. Like, our team was really good in 2000. So we went in with some optimism. And, man, we just got we just got destroyed. And we ended up going out in the group stage. And back then, there was no third place that went through. Third place was out. And uh, we finished third in the group. Amazingly, I'm just looking at the group now. Germany that year finished bottom. Germany were bottom of the group that year. So Germany were bottom, England were third, Romania went through in second place, and Portugal topped the group. So it was a crazy, crazy group. But um, yeah, I can remember that. And I just remember us conceding that penalty and them scoring in the 89th minute, and it just hurt so much. I was proper gutted. I mean, that was it. The, the, that was it. The tournament was over for England. So I've been there. It hurts. Uh, Virat Kohli Instagram followers is close to 200 million, says Athol. Uh, Rob Green is uh, a goat. Stan Collymore, legend. Uh, Days, I thought checks were eliminated, but they are through, says uh, Rafi. To be honest, bud, when it comes to the third places, I, I, it's so difficult to know who's out, who's through. Uh, we'll obviously get full clarity on that by the end of today. So, um, you know, we'll by by the end of today, we'll know every team that's through. And do we know who the third place teams are playing as well? I don't quite get this third place thing is such a mess. I just wish the teams were gone, to be honest. But um, will we know who everyone is playing? We must do, mustn't we? I don't quite get how they're going to work it all out, to be honest. How do they know who the third place of Group B is playing? How do they know who the third? Because... I don't quite get how it's all going to work. So we'll have to see. By the end of tonight, we will know. Uh, Mr. Meme said, you should stream every Euro and World Cup going forwards. I've really enjoyed it, bud. I've really enjoyed it. We was talking about that earlier. And uh, yeah, you know, we'll we'll see how it goes. Focused on this one for now. Um, uh, every Ingle tournament hurts. James, yeah, that's true. That's true. I think, I think... Going out on penalties is very painful. So, like, going out, and we've done that a few times. But, obviously, 96 hurt a lot. 
Um, I think the age you are as well. I mean, to be honest, when we went out to Iceland, that didn't hurt. To be honest, when we went out to Iceland, I was just really embarrassed. I, I wasn't hurting. I was just like, wow, this is as bad as it must get. <laughs> like, it was just, I was just like, pfft, embarrassed, disgusted. But I wasn't like hurting. I was more angry when we went out to Iceland. So if, if we're going to go out, going out to a team like Iceland's probably the best way to go. Because you don't, I wasn't hurting. I was just like, furious. So, um, that one wasn't too bad, actually. But, yeah, I, I don't know why. I don't know why Euro 2000 hurt me as much as it did. But I, I couldn't shake it for a few days. And I know that sounds crazy. But I genuinely was down for a few days after. I think it was because it was very rare for me to go out with friends and have a few drinks and actually watch a game. I always just watch it at home. I always just, you know, at home, a couple of drinks with the family just just watch it there so to to go out to a pub with people in anticipation of celebrating it and it's just a big gloomy evening it's just a big downer do you know what i mean i think as well like they're playing songs beforehand in the pub everyone's singing and dancing beers flowing everyone's laughing like getting ready for the game and then the atmosphere after is completely different. The atmosphere after, there's no songs. There's no joy. You're looking around and everyone's down. And, you know, they're just talking about the game or whatever. And people are filing off. And it feels like the end of summer, like, really special. And it's gone. And I think it hit home a bit harder as a result. So 2000 really got me. Yeah. Uh, I know, no disrespect, I'm supporting all the teams apart from England now. But nothing against you, says Scott. Oh. <laughs> okay. Thanks for letting me know, Scott. Uh, Crazy Ginger Jake Holden said, England are going to go out in the round of 16 and Southgate deserves the sack if he plays the same way he did in the group stage. I think, um, I think that he will play the same way, to be honest. I think he is going to, uh... He's going to try and play the same way because whoever we get is going to be very, very difficult for us to, you know, Gary Neville said it's going to be difficult for us to outplay any of those teams. You know, we don't have the players to outplay a Germany. We don't have the players to outplay a Portugal. Like, we don't we don't really have those players. Um, like, the, uh, that technical where they can, like, pass the ball and outpass. We're not going to outpass and outplay France not going to outpass and outplay Portugal or whatever. We don't have players that can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with, like, Ronaldo, Fernandes. We've got great players. We've got great players with potential. We've got a really young team. Do you know what I mean? Like, we've got great players like Saka. Great players like Foden. Who can stand on their own two feet and, you know, quite happily look at anyone in this tournament and go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. But there's just that bit of experience that's missing. There's just that bit of having been there and done it and I suppose when it comes to England when it comes to the knockout rounds they could go and do it like all, all truth be told Foden Mounts you know all this young talent they could step up gel it could click it could start flowing Southgate says they're aiming for champagne football um he says he also thinks he knows where this team is and he said that he knows it's a very young team um, and I thought that was quite telling, like him admitting this is quite a young side. I think that's his way of saying, you know, maybe it lacks a little bit of match IQ. Maybe it lacks a bit of experience. Maybe it lacks a little bit of up in the tempo when the time is right. Like kids, like I'd imagine kids want to go out there and just play hard for 90 minutes. But like, it's probably better to... Uh, like up the tempo at certain times, like really put the squeeze on, really throw everything at them and then like, you know, fade it back and try to catch them on the counter and things like this. So I think what he's saying is that the we're lacking a bit of that knowledge. I think Henderson brings that. This is where Henderson's going to be so important. Henderson knows when to really put the foot on the gas, when to pull back a little bit when to like put put them under pressure when to press a bit harder 
Um, he can very much dictate that and the team can follow. I know he's not like the captain, but um, he can very much dictate the play and how we play and, um, you know, orchestrate things from midfield. Because I've got to be honest, uh, the thing with Harry Kane is not only is he out of form, I don't see him guiding the team. Like, he seems so isolated. I don't see him doing anything right now. So Harry Kane has been our captain. And I can't even say that I've seen... I, I, I can't even say I've seen a captain on the pitch for England. And I think we're missing that. I really think we're missing that. Where's that voice on the pitch to say, right, go, go at them now, or plan B, or, you know, switch in the play, or, you know, bring it back, calm it down. Where's where's that voice? Because I have not seen Harry Kane doing it at all. He just seems to be very isolated, very frustrated, and, um, you know, maybe a little bit out of form as well. But I just it kind of feels like the team is sort of playing around Harry Kane. Like we're going to the 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 wings and whatever, and Harry Kane's kind of operating in the centre, and we're kind of like doing a lot of stuff on the outside around him. It's as if he's got like it's as if he's being forced to self isolate during a game. So I don't know. I kind of feel like with England, they might have to play the way they've been playing. I say that only because. If they go all out attack, I think they'll just. I don't know that they're going to be able to cope with what gets thrown at them. I'm not sure that defense would cope, even with Maguire back. Um, I think what Southgate's going to do is he's going to set the team up to play the way it has. I think that's why we've been playing this way in the group game so that they get used to it. Um, start trying to get some connections going, start trying to get some better service into Harry Kane. Uh, you know, you've got to look at five uh, clean sheets in a row as a success. So five clean sheets in a row as a success. Um, Nick in the odd goal. I think that's uh, we. I think that's the England way for this tournament. I really do. I think that is how England are going to play for the tournament, and uh, he's going to have to live and die by that sword. But so so big that Henderson is back. I think Henderson is very important for us and Maguire. But the only thing with Maguire is I think Mings had been doing very well. So I don't think Maguire is as critical. But uh, great to have him back. So Maguire back, Henderson back, and um, we'll have to see if they can just. They've got a week now. My hope, my hope, all my hopes are resting on. We find out who it is today. And then they get whatever the plan is, they get it right. Because the one thing that I do like about this England team is if you give it a plan, if you say, this is what we're going to do, I think they've got the quality to execute it. I think if you were to say to them, we're going to sit deep, we're going to try and catch them on the counter, uh, you know, we're going to try and use set plays, because he mentioned set plays saying that we're not getting enough from them. The set plays have been poor like free kicks, corners, we've got to get more out of those. And he's absolutely right, because that was our main source of goals in the World Cup. We got to the semi-finals because of set plays. A lot of our goals were coming from set plays, and um, we're just not getting any joy from set plays this time around. So I, I think he's going to play the same way. I think that's the plan. And I think these players are good enough to go and execute whatever plan they're given. And um, I've got high hopes I've still got high hopes, even though we finished top, even though it's going to be a horrific team, right? Could be the world champions, could be the current European champions, could be uh, Germany who are looking uh, delicious, like it could be any of those. Um, I've still got high hopes. I think this is a good squad, but I don't think the one thing we can't do is go. I don't think we can go toe to toe with them. I think I don't think that we can go toe to toe and match. I, I have not seen England play the way Germany played against Portugal for a long, 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 long time. A long, 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 long time. Do you remember that first half we played against Spain in Spain and we were winning 3-0 and we ended up losing the match 3-2? That might have been the last time I saw England with a real swagger in its step. Uh, and that was a friendly long, long time ago. Um, since then, it's just been quite comfortable one nils things along those lines uh kane's not a captain he kept coming back and getting the ball i just want him to stay up front and do his own job and be a striker says bonkers uh, sancho should have played last night said uh, james chadwick 
Uh, Rafi said, have you seen England play at Old Trafford? I haven't, unfortunately, no. <clears throat> I've seen England under-21s play at Molyneux. I've never actually seen England play. <clears throat> I've seen the under-21s. I've seen the women, but I've never seen the men. I saw the women at the Olympics. Uh, I managed to get tickets for uh, the women's football. I, I For the Olympics, I just put in for everything. I didn't care what. I just I desperately wanted to see anything at the Olympics. And um, the way it worked was like uh, about a month before they announced what you got, you put in for what you wanted. So and then if you got the tickets, you could choose whether you wanted them or not. So I just put in for everything. And I think a lot of people probably did. And um, I actually ended up getting, you know, a fair amount. Um, I think I spent like a good couple of thousand pounds on tickets for the Olympics. I mean, that was something that I was aware that was coming. And I'd been aware it was coming for years and years and years and years and years. And I constantly kept putting a little bit aside for it. So it was something that I had specifically saved for. And um, I ended up going to, I mean, the best was to go into the stadium. I was in the stadium one day to watch the athletics. I saw Usain Bolt. I saw Oscar Pistorius. I saw um, uh, uh, Jessica Ennis. I saw, that's her name, isn't it? Her name's now Jessica Ennis Hill, I think. It didn't sound right when I said it, but um, yeah, I saw I saw lots of uh, fantastic stuff. But one of the things that came back was women's football at Wembley. And I went and uh, it was England, Brazil. So I was over the moon. So I uh, watched England, Brazil, and uh, it was great. Really, I don't know if it was England or Great Britain. Now I'm thinking about it. So it might have been Great Britain. But uh, either way, either either. either. Uh, so I watched uh, I watched the, that and it was, uh, it was brilliant. We won one now. Uh, Rashford has been better at making kids packed lunches than football, says L- Learn Guitar Fall. Yeah, he has struggled. I think he's been struggling with a slight injury, to be honest. Um, and, you know, we haven't actually been seeing a great deal of him uh, in this tournament. Obviously, he's not been starting. And, um, you know, it depends where he is with that injury, that little niggle. We uh, There's a real spine of the of the England team that's dealing with issues um you know Maguire Henderson Rashford people are questioning Kane as to whether Kane's 100% or not like there's just a there's just a few uh kind of key players that don't seem to be 100% um hopefully again another week of because they're they're clearly ready to play they clearly you know I mean they're being brought on they're getting match time so another week down the road, where are we going to be? Some of these players going to get involved. Is there anything we can do to get Mount? Um, Chilwell, all right. I don't think he would have played anyway, but Mount is someone that I think definitely would have been in uh, Gareth Southgate's thinking. I think he'll be absolutely gutted that it looks like Mount uh, might not play. I, I would imagine Southgate's going to do a lot to try and get Mount up to speed with fitness and whatever and ready to play in that game, so... We'll find out who that's going to be uh, later today, of course. This first one is just a really fun group. Uh, it's just going to be really interesting to see how this plays out. Um, the next one is uh, obviously big, big connotations for England. Crazy Ginger Jake Holden said, I don't think we should go all out attack, but we should not play the way we currently are. It's not working. Uh, it failed against Scotland and it nearly failed versus uh, Republic and Croatia. It's a really good point. It's a really good point. I mean, it's a really good point. It it it's 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 a system that has I think delivered what Southgate kind of wants it to deliver, but it it's also a system that looks like it could easily fail. So you make a very very good point. I think that he he wants it to be tight at the back. He 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 really as a defender prioritizes defense. I think that, you know, he's got four at the back. He's got two defensive midfielders. That means that six players, seven including the goalkeeper, are all pretty much focused on defence. Now, yes, your fullbacks can get forwards and whatnot, um, but we've seen in quite a few games them not getting that far forward. 
Um, it was good to see Shaw and Walker both getting much further up the pitch against um, Czech Republic, much further up the pitch. So uh, that was uh, an improvement from what we'd seen from the other games. I think there were some slight improvements. Not enough, in all fairness. That Czech Republic game still won't have sent a message to the world. Still hasn't filled me with bags of confidence. But, um, you know, it's done what it's done. But the thing is that I think it's got, to a degree, what he wants. I think defensively, five clean sheets in a row now. Maybe more. I don't. I can't even remember the games before those two friendlies as to what the results were. But since like the three group games, the two friendlies, that's five clean sheets. He'll be over the moon with that, um, and just pinching the odd goal. I think what honestly, I think he will play the same. I think that he will be working on trying to find a way of creating more chances the other end of the pitch. I think by and large, he'll probably look at defence and go, okay, there's things we can work on, but it's there or thereabouts, like five clean sheets in a row. He'll then try and see if, is there a way we can get more chances created down the other end of the pitch? Why did the intensity drop at times during the game? Is there a way that we can maintain that for longer? Um, and I think one of the big things they're going to be working on this week is set plays. I think that what he's going to look at is when we get a free kick, can we get some up from it? When we get a, a corner, can we get some up from it? Can we make these moments count? Because those could be critical, crucial goals that help us go through. And the great thing about them as well is if you're keeping this shape um, and you're keeping it quite defensively minded... A great way to get goals is going to be from set plays, is from those free kicks and corners. And, and I could really see them working on that this week. And I think that um, free kicks and corners and everything is going to be critical during like the knockout uh, stages. So I, 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 would, I really would forget the idea of seeing a swashbuckle in England. I think, um, I think Gareth Southgate has shown his hand. You know, if, you, if he was going to play a swashbuckle in England, if he was going to play an attack in England, I think he would have done it against the Czech Republic. And he didn't. As soon as that team news came out and we had two defensive midfielders, I think that uh, he, he showed what he's, what he's all about. I mean, if you're not going to go all out attack during Czech Republic when you've already qualified, you ain't going to go all out attack. Again, or you're not going to you're not even going to turn up the attacking against France or Portugal, or Germany. He's he's going to keep this super tight. If, if anything, I actually heard last night, I can't remember who it was. Might have been Tifo. I do like those guys. They they seem to suggest we might get even more defensive. They seem to suggest that we might be looking at a back five. They seem to suggest that, you know, we might have a back five, uh, two holding midfielders, and, you know, see everyone else can attack. Like, he really might absolutely park the bus. He might, he might just look to park the bus in this next game. And that's where the free kicks, the corners are going to become so important. So I know that uh, people are going to be uh, against that to a degree. But I think if he can get us through, man, if he can get us through this next game, can you imagine the optimism? Can you imagine if we knock out a Portugal, a Germany or a France, if we get through at Wembley, the, all of a sudden... This country is going to really believe, really believe. Because I'm not sure what the next game would be. And it wouldn't be at Wembley, but it would undoubtedly be an easier game on paper. It would it would have to be. It would have to be an easier game. I don't know. You could get much harder. It wouldn't, wouldn't be Italy. Definitely it wouldn't be Italy. They're on the other side of the draw, I believe. So it wouldn't be Italy. And I don't think Belgium. I think Italy-Belgium would be a team we'd have to worry about at the for the final so they're on the other side so i think it would be someone like a maybe a spain or a you know someone along those lines which you know spain would still be pretty moody to have to face but they've not been as great as what we've seen from the group of death uh thoughts on sancho to united says marcus i, I look i'm a sancho fan uh, i really rate him 
I really like Sancho. I think that he is someone that could bring something that United need, but he's not he's not exactly what United need. What United need right now is a central defender and a defensive midfielder. Now, I really like Scott McTominay, but he's not a he's not a defensive midfielder. Scott McTominay is like a box to box. Um, he can also play in defence, and he's played in defence for Scotland, of course, and he does a decent job. And and if we had to go through this season with Scott McTominay being told you are the the central defensive midfielder, you are the the one that's got to do that job, then so be it. You know, so be it. I don't personally. I think I don't think we would win the league. With Scott McTominay as our defensive midfielder, I think uh, McTominay is a great player. That absolutely a player that you want in your squad. So versatile. Um, always puts in a shift. Always works hard. But he's not a world-class defensive midfielder. He's not Kante. Right? And I kind of feel that I don't know much about other leagues, to be honest. I know Premier League pretty well. Um and I do try, obviously, to keep an eye on what's happening uh, as we built towards the Euros. But I just don't get time to watch La Liga and all this. So there's a few YouTube channels that are really useful. Tifo being one. I love Tifo. And uh, Tifo did a little article on, like, great, great um, uh, defensive midfielders that would work for United. And it was just a list of names that I'd never heard of, to be honest. You know, people playing in Slovakia and whatever. But their numbers are incredible. And their numbers, like, you know, Jules Wern, all this kind of stuff. Of course, the problem is, are those players going to work when they come to United and the Premier League? It's always the gamble, isn't it? But we've seen time and time again, smaller clubs take those chances and unearth absolute gems. So, I mean, look at Basuma in, uh, at Brighton. I mean, he is the talk of the town. People, people are desperate to sign him. And I'm, I think he will go to a big club this summer. So, I think that... Um, there's there's definitely players out there. We don't need to spend loads of money on a defensive midfielder. People would love Declan Rice because he's Premier League proven and he is a great player, but it doesn't have to be Rice. Like I think there's probably players of a similar quality that you can find um out there. And hopefully, you know, United have got a director of football now and they're able to unearth some of those gems. Maybe they just need to watch Tifo. <laughs> <laughs> and they might get some inspiration there. But I do think, like, the San Sancho would be a big help. But, you know, with, with Greenwood, you would think he's going to kick on to a degree this year. Greenwood's been playing that position fine. He's been doing all right on the right. It'd be better to have a proper player that's, that's there, that's proven, that's got, you know, great goals, great assists. It's just, it's a lot of money to spend. I kind of feel like we're spending a lot of money on what I think is probably the third position we need to strengthen the most. Like, the the position that I think we've got to strengthen the most is, is defensive midfielder. I really think defensive midfielder is number one. Top of the tree. If you're going to spend 80-odd million, then spend it on the right defensive midfielder. Um, next position would be someone to partner Maguire in central defence. That would be the second position to strengthen. Third position would be the right wing. Fourth position would be a striker. Um, we've got Cavani for one more year, so that's okay. Cavani is not someone that's going to be able to play every game, though. But we've just said that Greenwood might be kicking on this year. Um, obviously, we can play Rashford there or Martial up there as well. So I feel like we can get through. But unfortunately, this feels like another get-through type season. It, because, really, we need at least four top top players if united were serious about winning the league this year they would go and get sancho that deal would be done now i don't know why they're messing around but they would go and get sancho they would go and get a, a quality defensive midfielder someone like rice but if you can't get rice then someone like rice there are players out there that that are as good just not premier league proven so you might have to take a gamble might have to take a gamble. Or if you want Premier League pro proven, go and get Basuma. Uh, someone like Varane uh, in defence, not going to come cheap, but, you know, or Pal Torres, which apparently they are trying to work on that deal. But United get linked to so many players and then they just fall through. United are constantly linked to players and then we ne never get them. 
And I'm pretty sure anyone that's going to transfer this summer is linked to United. Right? So, Pau Tarez or Varane. I, would, I wouldn't mind Ben White personally, but apparently he's going to Arsenal. Um, Basuma or Rice or any of the players that Tifo have mentioned. Sancho. And then, honestly, a striker. We could do with a striker. Um, and... I mean, I, I like Silva. Uh, is it? Is he at Frankfurt? I can't remember what team he plays for in Germany, but I think he scored like the second most Bundesliga goals. Scored more goals than Haaland this year, and he's available for about thirty odd million. And um, someone is interested. It might be Arsenal again, actually. Someone's interested in him. Andre Silva plays. Play for Spain, is he? I think he's Spanish. Um, so. Yeah, I'm I'm very, very interested. No, he might be Portuguese thinking about it. Um, I'm, I'd be interested in like looking to bring him in. Because Cavani's not going to play every game. And if he's only going to cost, only going to cost 30 odd million, I don't think that's that bad. For a player that scored like the second most Bundesliga, he got like something like 30 odd goals. Like that'd be really useful to bring into the team. So I like Sancho. I'd love to have him. Absolutely. But there's there's also alternatives like Rafina from uh, Leeds, who I think would be great in that position. Um, uh, Coman, Kingsley Coman, who uh, you know I don't know if he's available anymore, but he would be great in that position. So it doesn't have to be Sancho, it just has to be someone. We've got Ahmad as well, who could play there. Who's gonna obviously have kicked on? We bought him last year. He played and he's looked really good. So I think. We really need a good transfer window at United. We need a great transfer window. We need about four players, and I think they'll fall short. Uh, OD Videos, shout out to you. Uh, James Chadwick said, uh, who'd want to play for Arsenal? Uh, Harley said, I just realised Smackdown only has seven women. So unless they debut Mia Yim this Friday, it's going to be difficult to do qualifying matches. Uh, I also watch the Scottish Premier League, but only the big games, says James. Uh, shout out to you, James. Uh, Lauren said, can you show us the, the teams? Absolutely. Can do that. I'll show you Sweden and uh, Poland. Lauren, that is not a problem. There's the uh, Sweden team for those that are interested in who's playing for Sweden. So uh, Olsen, Lindelof, uh, Dan Olsen, Larsen, Olsen. Isaac up front. I, don't mind, I mean, I'm looking at it through fantasy football eyes. I'm looking at this like, are there some players there people might have in their fantasy teams? Uh, I think Isaac is a player that a lot of people might have. I think that he's done uh, very well in this uh, tournament. He's looked very, very good. Um, so he might be a player that people have. People might have picked up a few of the, like Lindelof maybe. Olsen in goal maybe. Um, but yeah, I think all four of these teams are going to be playing at full strength because um, all four of these teams can still top the group, get eliminated. Like, you know, there's, there's options for all four sides. So that's the Sweden team and Poland, of course, the big man up front, Lewandowski. Uh, they've got uh, uh, some decent players in there. Um you can see very defensive minded. It's going to be hard for Sweden to break Poland uh, down. Um, Poland have got Poland are currently bottom of the group. They've lost one, drawn one. Uh, they've got a goal difference of uh, minus one. Um, so you know, I think Poland are going to keep this quite tight. They're going to uh, they're going to do what England are going to do. I think in the next round they're going to keep it tight and uh, try and pinch a goal where they can. I could I could see England lining up like this in the next round. You know. Three four two one. I could see England doing that, and I think uh, where Poland's twenty six and twenty one are, that'll be uh, Shaw and Walker, and then maybe a back three of like Mings, Maguire, and Stones. I could very much see that. So I could see England lining up like this with Mings, Maguire, Stones in the back three, uh, a midfield of Shaw. Maybe Henderson or Phillips, Rice and Walker. Uh, obviously, Kane where Lewandowski is. And then it's who do you put in 20 and 11? I think he'd probably go with someone like... He might go with Foden and Grealish. Foden and Grealish might make sense. Foden and Grealish would be quite exciting, actually, in those two positions. 
But I, I could see England lining up this way. 3 4 2 1. So there we go. Let's switch it back to uh, Spain and Slovakia. And uh, we are getting uh, close to the start of the game now. We're only uh, just over three minutes. We've got the uh, national anthems right now. England's next game will be at Wembley. 5 p.m. Tuesday, 29th of June. It's exciting, isn't it? I'm excited. Poland have got to win. So uh, they're going to attack, I think. Uh, well, let's see. That doesn't it doesn't look to me like a, an attacking uh, formation. Looks to me like they're going to try and keep it quite tight, not lose, and try and yes, they need to win, but um, try and just take the chances when they come to, and uh, like do it that way. Uh, I don't know why we don't play three at the back like they play for their clubs. Three at the back. I mean, like Mings has been awesome. I actually wouldn't mind a back three of Stones, Maguire, and Mings. I think Stones, Maguire, and Mings with uh, two fullbacks. The only the only thing I wouldn't be so sure about is then playing two defensive midfielders as well. Um, but you know, I I kind of I'm go I'm just gonna have to trust with what he goes with. There's so many different ways you could line up in that next game, but he will be defensive minded. Uh, opinions on Sunderland AFC. Uh, I don't know much about Sunderland, to be honest. I mean, I, I tend to keep an eye on the Premier League. So Sunderland are... I don't even know what league they're in anymore. I know they were down in um, League One. But did they get promoted or anything? Uh, Football League One semi-final... Oh no! You guys got got knocked out, did you? So what you did? Let's have a look. Let's look at the table. So you finished fourth in League One. So you finished fourth in League One, and uh, you got to the playoffs, uh, but you unfortunately didn't get to the final, and uh, as a result, didn't get promoted. Um, I mean, you guys look look to be there or thereabouts, don't you? I mean, I'm I don't know anything about Sunderland. In truth, I don't know what you need. Um, but, you know, the fact that you finished fourth, I think you've got to take some encouragement from that and uh, hopefully, you know, get promoted. It's a tough league, though. You've got some decent teams in there, some decent names in that uh, league. I don't tend to look down in League One that often, but it's kind of juicy. There's a fair few teams in there that have been in the Premiership. Teams like Charlton, Portsmouth, Ipswich, uh, Wigan. Swindon, obviously Sunderland, Blackpool, like they're all in uh, League One now, so tough little league. But yeah, you'd know better than me what you need. Right, we're about to get uh, going with this game. This is our first game of the evening, and uh, we are obviously heading towards um, what I think is uh, the main event of the day, which is uh, going to be France and Portugal. Should be a great game, that. And obviously big repercussions for uh, what's going to happen uh, going forward for England. Right, we are underway. Uh, James Ward-Prowse should be in this England team, says Marcus. Do you know, it's hard to disagree. I thought that his deliveries of set pieces, you know... I mean, his, his delivery of set pieces has always been good. It's been good for years. But you would love to have that for England, wouldn't you? I mean, maybe that's how Trippier gets on the pitch. Maybe it's not going to be Shaw and Walker. Maybe it's going to be Trippier and Walker. Because that way, if we get a free kick or something, Trippier's there to take it. So uh, maybe maybe the England team, maybe Trippier and Walker will be our two uh, fullbacks. Uh, my dream is for Man City to get relegated, but obviously that won't happen. Uh, William, shout out to you. Hope you are well. Crazy Ginger Jake Holden says Sunderland are trash. They're the worst team in the world. We saw them cry on Netflix. Toon Army for life. Boo Mackums. <laughs> uh, can Spain be eliminated today? Absolutely. 
Spain can be eliminated today, yes. Uh, currently, they're third. If they lose their game, they would only have two points, and that is not going to be enough. So if Spain lose this game, then, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm almost certain they're out. In fact, what I might do is have a look at the groups, see if I can just jot down the groups, because I know there's going to be a lot of people asking, what does this mean for the third place teams and all that? So uh, it might make sense to just jot the standings down. So I'm going to quickly do that now. A couple of minutes gone, and uh, Spain are playing in white. Slovakia in uh, blue, and Slovakia are on the ball at the moment. So at the moment, there's a lot of teams having to like hold their breath. There's a lot of teams that don't know if they're uh, through or not. Uh, Switzerland are a team in... Uh, Oh, 1-0 already. A goal already. Wow. A goal already. And Sweden have scored. Poland already won behind. That is a big, big problem. That is a big, big problem for Poland because their lineup, their formation did not look very attacking at all to me and uh, already they needed to win that game so to already be one down is uh, heartbreak for Poland uh, one nil Sweden yeah they just they just showed it on uh, on screen they just showed it on screen so a goal already unbelievable Uh, 1 0 Sweden, 1 0 Sweden. It was a nice finish as well, says James Chadwick. So I think that's uh, Forsberg, was it they said? Uh, Finland uh, find themselves in third place in Group B. So Finland are going to be uh, holding their breath. Finland don't have a great chance by the looks of it, but. They've got three points. So what that means is, uh, again, you know, if uh, Spain lose, Spain have only got two points. So even Finland would get ahead of Spain. So that's Group B. Let's have a look at Group C. Can't believe that goal already. Can't believe we've literally just started. And a goal already for uh, Sweden... Sweden, uh, big for them. They're top of the group. Ball played uh, across Spain. Yeah, cleared by uh, Slovakia. So Spain in Slovakia's uh, penalty area. Uh, Ukraine. Ukraine have scored four. They've got a goal difference of minus one. They've got three points. Ukraine, Ukraine are looking all right, you know. Someone was asking about Ukraine earlier. They're looking all right. All right, let's have a look at Group D. So, Group D. Uh, morning, XFL. If shout out to you. Ball goes out to the left-hand side for Spain. Right on the edge of the penalty area. Looking to whip it inside. Uh, it's a lovely ball. Goes along the six-yard box and um, nicely uh, collected by the uh, Slovakian goalkeeper. Right, just looking at England's group. And Czech Republic finished in uh, third place with four points. So they're looking very good. I think if you get if you get four points and you're third, I think you're in a good place. All right, in Scotland. So right right now it looks like Switzerland and Czech Republic are going through. Uh, we need another two teams to join them as of right now i'd be surprised if they don't i'd be surprised if switzerland and czech republic don't go through 
because right now in Group E, which is the group we're looking at, Group E, Spain are currently only on two points. And they're in uh, third place. Even with that Sweden goal, Sweden were top anyway. So currently, well, with the draw here, they'd be on three points, wouldn't they? Three points. I think currently, currently, Spain are going through. If it ends like this, I think currently Spain are going through. Oh, it's going to be so close, though. This is coming down to, like, a goal or something like this. Like, honestly, it is that close. It is that close at the moment. But I think if you finished on four points in third place, then you, you're looking pretty good. Uh, three points with a draw. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. It was uh, two points right now. So it'd be three points with the draw. They, uh, if, it, if the draw is nil-nil, then they've only scored one goal, but their goal difference is, is zero. So that is better than the minus one. Uh, for the Ukraine and the minus two for Finland. The only thing I don't know is what do they count first? Do they count goal difference first or do they count goals scored first? What, Which one is more important? In the list of who goes through, obviously points is the most important. But if you're on the same points, then what is it next? Is it goal scored or goal difference? That's going to be important to find out. And maybe it's something we have a look at at the half-time score. Just having a look at the standings. Uh, Portugal. Portugal are currently in third position with three points as well. Portugal. Third. I think almost certainly three teams are going through from that group of death. Interesting. We'll try and keep an eye on it as uh, the day goes on. Uh, it's very confusing, the whole third place thing. Very confusing. Uh, goal difference first, says Crazy Ginger Date Holden. Oh, okay. So goal difference first and then goal scored. Okay. So what that means is currently, uh, currently Czech Republic. One, goals, five. So currently the Czech Republic are going through because uh, they've got a uh, plus one goal difference and four points switzerland are going through because they've got four points uh who else would be going through it would be spain would be going through they've got three points uh and uh zero goals and portugal now obviously portugal has still got a play right so portugal have still got a play i'm i'm presuming they lose so, right now it looks like, and obviously there's a lot that can change. Any goal changes this. That's how close this is. Any goal changes this. Uh, we've got Czech Republic, Switzerland, Spain and Portugal as the four teams going through right now. Uh, there's a, a penalty uh, review and uh, a penalty has been given for Spain. Spain have been awarded a penalty... <gasps> so uh the slovakian player went to kick the ball so he goes to kick the ball but he ends up kicking uh the spanish player instead it's uh, that looks unfortunate to me that looks really unfortunate he goes to kick the ball the spanish player comes over he ends up kicking the player instead but he doesn't doesn't necessarily mean to i don't know man that looks a bit moody to me it's a Spanish penalty. Here we go. Drama. Is it Murata? If you are just joining a Spanish penalty, this will change everything again. And it is... Saved! It's saved! It's a penalty save! Wow! It's great. It's well taken. Murata has got a penalty saved. Oh, they're saying... Well, Ali McCoy says definite penalty. 
I thought it was a bit harsh. Yeah, he picks the right way. It's a nice height. It's a set. It's saved. I was, I was, I had the text box open. I was ready to write the score, and it is saved. We've got drama in this game. He's a great goalkeeper, though. He really is a great goalkeeper. He's one of their best players. Uh, Debrowka back at it. Debrowka, one of the best keepers of all time, says Crazy Ginger Jake Holden. Saved by the Newcastle man. He's a really good keeper. Uh, save. What a save. Up the tune keeper. Uh, the ref went to see his wife, Mrs. Var. Well, I feel bad for it. I don't think it was a penalty, but Ali McCoist is like, yeah, it's a definite penalty. I, I don't know, because the guy was going to kick the ball. The ball's in front of him. He goes to kick it. The Spanish player kind of comes across and he ends up, like, clipping him, catching him. It's difficult, isn't it? Because he does kick the player instead of the ball. So, like, in that regard, yes, it is a foul. I suppose, like, if it happened anywhere else on the pitch, I'd, I'd be, I'd be like, yeah, it's, he kicked him. It's a foul. But penalty is just so harsh. I think justice has been served. That's what it's come down to. Justice has been served. It's, uh, it remains nil, nil. Uh, New Zealand are 70 for two with 26 overs remaining. Wow, that's getting that's getting tense, isn't it? That's getting tense. Uh, Fadzili says, uh, "Who do you support? I support uh, Man United in the uh, in the uh, Premiership, but I'm not one of these like die-hard fans that's gonna. Do you know what I mean? Be bantering everyone. I I, I just like following the team and uh, following like the transfers and all that kind of stuff. I'm just really I'm really passionate about the tactics and like what players do we need? Uh, I think it comes from me really enjoying playing like." fantasy manager premier manager I've played them games like my whole life i was playing like premier manager on the mega drive um loved it like going back to like 96 something like this it's one of my all-time favorite games if, if i was to like have an evening where i just sat down and played a game i could quite happily play that game all evening even now love it do you know what I mean? You've got your team and you're like, oh, I'm just, I need to improve like that winger. And you go to the transfer market. Who's there? I've got enough money for him. Uh, I could maybe sell that guy. If I sell that guy, it's going to like, I just love the whole strategy side of it. So, yeah, I'm not really someone that's like bantering, uh, but I'm uh, someone that really enjoys looking at like the teams. What do they need? What do they do well? It's been a pleasure to watch like Italy. And uh, watch, you know, what what they do, how they play. Same with Germany, actually. Germany's performance against um, Portugal was, was fantastic. So lucky, in a way, that we get to see all this kind of stuff, you know? Imagine if we lived in a world where you only heard about games, you only heard about scores. Just really take for granted being able to see a lot of this stuff. It's a good save. Strong hands. Headed forward, uh, ball goes out. Looks like it's going to be a throw-in for Spain. So uh, Spain with a throw-in on the uh, halfway line. Uh, Dubrovka must be using our brand, says Wash and Go. Uh, Crazy Ginger said, I played career mode on FIFA. I was the same with that career mode as you were with Football Manager. It's just so addictive, isn't it? I don't know what it is about it. It's just so, so addictive. I mean, like, when it comes to wrestling, I I, I sort of feel a, a, a little similar. It's a bit different because, like, wrestling games can be quite fun to just play anyway. And so can football games, of course. People love FIFA. But I must admit, like, if you said, do you want to play a game of FIFA or do you want to play, like, a season of Football Manager? I'll take a season of Football Manager every day. I love it. Um... I might even be the same with wrestling. If someone said, do you want to play in my career mode or do you want to be GM? I think I'd be GM. I would be GM. I know I would. 
I don't know what it is about the managing side of it that I just really enjoy. Right, we've got... I need to try and find this other game. That's what I wanted to do. I, I actually don't have it on. So, uh, I, I did say I would be following the other game. And I lied. That's what I did. I lied. But we can fix it. I can I can unlie. So, uh, if you are just joining us, Penalty Missed. Penalty Missed by Spain. Well, it was saved, actually, but... And uh, in the other game, it's currently 1-0. Uh, Just seeing Lewandowski uh, firing at uh, at the Swedish goal. Uh, Poland playing in red. Sweden in uh, yellow. Uh, Mr. Meme said, I can't wait for later. Not only have we an early final in France, Portugal, but we will also find out who England face next. Yeah, I mean, I think England, I mean, they're in a good place. You couldn't really ask for much more, could you? Oh, what? Is the ball? Oh, my God, Poland. Oh, Sweden goalkeeper makes a save. Another Polish player comes in to get a header on the ball, and it, he puts it against the crossbar. Need to see a replay of that because it's absolutely incredible. So a corner comes in. And their keeper is down. Olsen's down. Olsen seems to make a hell of a save. We're just seeing a replay. Ball whipped in. It goes against the... Oh, my God. How did he miss from there? Was that Lewandowski? How did he miss from there? Lewandowski. Oh, my God. You've got to see it. You've got to see it. So, corner comes in. Lewandowski headers it down, it bounces, goes up, hits the crossbar, bounces back out. He then headers it with an open goal. He then headers it, and he headers it against the crossbar again. They hit the crossbar twice. Wow. Big chance for Spain there as well as the ball goes wide. There's drama everywhere here. This is amazing. There's drama everywhere. A Spanish player just needed to touch the ball. It was delivered beautifully. Look at that. Oh, my God. The one Spanish player, I think it was Morata, tries to header it, but it goes past him. Coming in at the back, you've got Pedri, like, sticking his leg out. This is going to be a good, this is going to be a good evening, isn't it? This is going to be a good evening. we got drama everywhere here. Swedish fans in uh, fine voice. Uh, that uh, uh, Lewandowski miss equals Ronaldo's miss versus Hungary. Uh, I just saw it as I switched the channel. Against the crossbar twice. Oh, it's insane. WWE Central, shout out to you. Yeah, it's definitely one of those that you'd want to see. Ball comes in. Headers it down first, and then comes up, and then straight. <laughs> it's from like, I don't even know. It was like four yards out. He headers, Lewandowski headers the ball four yards out and hits the crossbar. It's the kind of thing that they should be showing on this. They show goals, but it's so stunning that they should show that. Uh, WWE Central, shout out to you. Hope you are well, my friend. Hope everyone's in uh, enjoying this uh, afternoon of football as we uh, build towards uh, the group of death. Final round of games for the group of death. Poland need three goals. Yeah, it's... It's an ask, isn't it? You just got you just got to go for it, didn't you? What else can you do? I mean, that could be an absolute goal fest that game now, because Poland can't really afford to sit back. I mean, the one thing you'd say is there's still plenty of time. If you're going to concede, at least you've conceded early, but still heartbreak for uh, for Poland. I really want Poland to go through.
Ball played on the uh, left-hand side and it's uh, headed out. Uh, Lindelof looks like he's going to uh, throw in the ball here. Oh, he's like, such a good player. As soon as I heard Sweden had scored, I was, I was sure it was him. Ball into the centre, headed away by uh, Poland. Uh, in the uh, Spanish game, we're just at the halfway line. Sweden on the ball, got caught. Poland trying to uh, get it clear. Uh, Dave, did you hear about the policeman that's been found guilty of manslaughter of a former footballer? Um, I, I, I didn't, to be honest. I heard it was Atkinson, wasn't it? I remember him playing for Villa. I, I remember him playing. And I think, didn't he get, was it tasered or something? I mean, it's so unusual for us to have a, a, an incident like that in the UK. I can't say that I've uh, remember too many cases of like a police manslaughter charge. Uh, Spain breaking into uh, Slovakia's penalty area. Slovakia trying to clear for their lives as the ball's uh, bouncing around. I mean, this is just, this is really has been the, the story of Spain's uh, Euro journey. Like, dominating possession. I mean, look, at it's like, what is it? 67%? I mean, they're normally even higher than that. They're normally in the 80s. 70s and 80 uh, percent for possession. So they dominate it, but the end product just isn't there. Uh, Daly and Atkinson, yes. Uh, Enrique should have called Aspas is much better striker than Morata. Shot, nice save. Pretty comfortable, but a nice save by uh, goalkeeper. Slavlaki and goalkeeper having to get uh, something on that. Looked like it was goal bound. Yeah, it's well goal bound. Straight down his throat, but it's a good save. Solid. All you can ask for. Corner to Spain. Plenty of Spanish players around. Slovakia not doing a great job of clearing. Heading it out. Headed back in. And uh, ball goes out. Is that going to be another corner? I think it's another corner to Spain. Ramping the pressure up. Uh, in when you can, should, uh, my grandma. Oh, London. London, uh, Morgan. Shout out to you. I'm really, really sorry to hear that, but I hope everything's okay. Thoughts absolutely with her. So, shout out to you, uh, London. Shout out to your grandma as well. Is that uh, is that Virginia? That's, she's been on the streams a couple of times, I think. Shout out to her. Uh, it does feel weird seeing no Real Madrid players in the Spain squad. Just looking at the uh, Sweden and Poland uh, stats at the moment, it's 52% uh, possession for Poland. They've had three shots, none on target. Uh, Sweden have had uh, one shot and one on target. So, uh, obviously, Sweden 1-0 uh, at the moment. But Poland uh, definitely holding their own. Uh, in the Spain-Slovakia game, we've just got a drinks or a cooling break, as they call it. So a cooling break right now. So uh, just showing replays of that penalty that was saved. Uh, thoughts with you and your family, London Morgan. So, uh, right, we're still... Lovely free kick by Poland. Whipped into the back post but headed away. We're still underway in the Sweden-Poland game. Right, 20, uh, 25 minutes gone. We've only got 20 minutes left of this first half. As it currently stands, as it currently stands, I believe that uh, Spain are still in third place. I think a draw for Spain is not good enough for them to get out of uh, third. Let's have a look. Let's go back to that group because I can't quite remember it off the top of my head. 
Uh, yes, a draw is not enough for Spain. Spain have got two points. Slovakia have got three. So a draw here would not see Spain leave uh, third spot. Uh, Calling break over in the uh, of the game now. And we are back underway with uh, Spain and Slovakia. Uh, Edward Brown, shout out to you. Heather, hope you are well. Heather said, I'm all caught up with wrestling news. My husband and I went to No worries, Heather. Didn't really miss a great deal. Wasn't the best of performances. A little better than Scotland when we played them, but still nowhere near where we should be. Uh, days the Christensen goal against Russia when he scored. It was like a wrestling pop, says Kevin. Uh, just replaying the uh, Forsberg goal. Forsberg's actually scored two in three matches. So Sweden looking good for going through at the moment. So if you've got a fantasy team, I'm not sure who would they play. We need to we need to start looking at all this as well. Who would the winner of Group E go on to play? Winner of Group E, oh, they play a third place team. The winner of Group E plays uh the third place team from Group A, B, C, or D. Does anyone know? And I know I should know, but I don't know. Does anyone know how does this actually get sorted? Like how how do we know who plays Sweden? If Sweden top the group, they can play. The, the third place team of A, B, C, or D. So how does that get decided? Because the winner of Group C could play uh, the third place team from D, E, or F. Uh, the winner of Group B can play the third place team from A, D, E, or F as well. So is it just, is it drawn or something? I don't, I really don't know how it, how it works. I probably should Google it. Uh, how do you play Busquets and Pedri over Thiago and Lorente? Some questionable choices by Enrique, says Walid. Chris said, Sweden is my dark horse. Looking pretty solid, aren't they? Looking pretty solid. Right, ball played across, giving the ball away right on the edge of the penalty area by Slovakia. Oh, hits the crossbar. Oh, he's palmed it in. He's palmed it in. Wow, that is a real gift. What a, what a crazy goal that is. Dubravka, the ball's coming down and he palms it to try and palm it over. And he palms it into his goal. It's such, it's one of the craziest goals you'll ever see. The ball hits the crossbar, bounces up, and as it's coming back down, Dubravka's having to try and, why didn't he face the other direction? Why didn't Dubravka stand on the goal and palm it that way? He was trying to put it out for a corner, I think. But he's took a hell of a gamble. Look, it goes up. Oh. That's bad. We've seen a replay. So as the balls come down, if he'd if he'd have connected with his full hand, if he'd have connected with his full hand as the ball comes down, if it hit him here, he would have palmed it over. The problem is it hits him here, and so as it comes down, it hits him there, and it actually spins into the goal. If it hit in there, it would have gone over there into the goal. That's the that's the difference right there. It's a Dubravka own goal, and yeah, it stands. Spain have scored. So right now, Slovakia are in third position. Spain a second, Sweden a top. It is one of the weirdest own goals. It is so strange. 
I mean, the only thing I would say is he's a hero for saving the penalty. So, do you know what I mean? He saves the penalty, and then but then does that. He'll be beating himself up for that one. Well, it said this Euros have been full of own goals. Let's switch. I mean, it's. I feel for him because it's not his fault. It, well, it is, but it isn't. It's so strange because Slovakia give the ball away on the edge of their penalty area. So Slovakia gave the ball away. I don't know what Slovakian player it was, but it was a horrible, horrible pass that was uh, given away, intercepted. And then the shot came in. It hit the crossbar. It went up, and then he ends up palming it in. It's just a whole catalogue of errors. I mean, to only blame the goalkeeper there is 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 wrong. Uh, let's go, Spain. They and Sweden are in my acca. Day should be a hand model. Dude, I've got great hands. Uh, eight shots uh, attempted by Spain. Uh, well, nine according to our stats and four on target. 69-31. In the other game, it's still 1-0. And the stats on that other game, 58-42. Uh, still only the one shot on target, and that was for Sweden. So Poland really do need to... Uh, up the tempo a little here. I mean, Lewandowski will be kicking himself for the uh, header that uh, he headed against the bar twice. Oh, man, that own goal. What an own goal. That's got to be the one of the craziest goals. I'm thinking about Schick from the halfway line. I mean, that's one of the craziest goals we've seen at the tournament. But that own goal might just take it for weirdest goal. Uh, we really haven't seen much from uh, Slovakia going forward. They've had no shots, no shots on target and only 30% of the ball. So, you know, Spain have been dominant as always. Uh, what was Dubravka doing there? I think he was trying to palm it over for a corner. I, I don't... I suppose... I suppose, in a way, I can understand not wanting to palm it back into the trouble area. You know, you palm it back out for a Spanish player to then score, you, you're going to regret that. But you've really got to... You've really got to be careful. If the ball's coming down, you've really got to be careful. And, well, it's just a nightmare, isn't it? I mean, why didn't he catch it? <laughs> He's tried to palm it over. Why didn't he catch it? I don't know. It's easy in retrospect, isn't it? It's easy to go, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? He, just, he had to make a decision. His, his brain has said, palm it over for the corner. And he's palmed it in. Um, he hit it with the wrong hand, if that was the case. Uh, uh, Louisa says that's the seventh own goal in this tournament. I wonder what the all-time record is. We've got to be there or thereabouts, haven't we? I can't believe how many own goals there's been. Uh, Dubravka is normally incredible. Uh, I got Dubravka in my fantasy team. Well, I mean, look, he it's just an unfortunate moment. He saved a penalty, so he scored an own goal. He'll probably lose points for that, but he saved a penalty. Is he onside? Is he onside? Oh, he's put it wide. No, now the flag goes up. He looked miles offside. So the ball uh, got played through to the... Yeah, is country mile offside? He has a look at the linesman. Yeah, he should. It well, doesn't matter anyway. He didn't put the ball in the net. Uh, it's already seven and we're in the group stages. Edward said, what's your prediction for the France game? I think both teams will score. Uh, what, France-Portugal? I think it's going to be a bomb burner. I think it's going to be really good. 
I mean, there is a real incentive in that group because the 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 winner of Group F plays a third place team. So the winner of Group F will play uh, a team that's third from Group A, B, or C. Whereas the runner-up has to play England in England. So I don't, you know, as much as we're sitting here as England fans, and we are all England fans, uh, I as much as we're sitting here as England fans saying, oh, we don't want this team, we don't want that team, I can't believe that any team is going to want to play England in England. I can't believe that's something that uh, those teams want to do. Go to Wembley to play England. So I think that they're all going to be, you know, really trying to get uh, top of the group, trying uh, um, to get one of those third place sides. Throw in for uh, Spain. We've got uh, eight minutes left of this first half. Uh, Austin316, shout out to you. Uh, Chris said, I don't know the rules and even I knew that was offside. New Zealand are edging closer. They're 89 for two, says the deal. Tense, though, isn't it? Slow, isn't it? I mean, they're going the right way about it, just edging forward. It's been a, a good game, that. Right, ball whipped in. About to be whipped in. Free kick for Spain. Into the uh, penalty area and uh, cleared by Slovakia. Um, Austin, you just missed a great goal. One of the weirdest goals I've ever seen. Isn't it funny like how, like, it, when you say, like, you've just missed a, a weird goal, you it still doesn't really do it justice. There's so many different ways that people can score, but I've never, I don't think I've ever seen that way of scoring a goal. I don't think I've ever seen that happen before. Uh, people have been coming in and hitting on days. That always happens. In all fairness, that always happens. Cheese Whiz says slobber knocker. It's going to be a slobber knocker. It is going to be a slobber knocker. It's going to knock all your slobbers. Uh, right, we've got uh, action everywhere at the moment. There's people down in the uh, Spain-Slovakia uh, game. So um, it's about four people down. You can't win the ball, though. And then there's the tackle after. Look at it. <laughs> Everyone's down. Everyone's like a Royal Rumble. So, uh, yellow card to uh, Busquets. Uh, Poland on the attack. Playing the ball into the centre. Breaking into the Sweden half. Out to the left-hand side. Keeping the ball in for Poland. Lovely cross too deep no one at the back post uh sounds interesting uh yeah well it's hard to explain it's it's better to watch uh gregor john says i'm rooting for spain i'm rooting for spain to get eliminated that's what i'm rooting for i want them gone they're a good team man do you know that Spain are the sort of side that could win this because they've they've been so dominant in all three of their games. The only thing they've been missing is the end product. If they if if Marata suddenly starts scoring, suddenly finds form, Spain could win this. I mean, seventy percent possession, ten shots, four on target, sixty-two, fifty-two. Sorry, Jules won. Against 30% possession, no shots, no shots on target, 48% of Jules won. Like, they are battering Slovakia here, but it's still only 1-0, and that was a known goal. That is Spain's problem. Ball whipped in, Poland have got the ball in and around uh, the penalty area, but it's cleared by Sweden. Uh, how are those Lopez shirts coming on? I haven't had a chance to check uh, WWE Shop, to be honest. I, I got up and just went straight onto this stream. But um, there was quite a lot of demand last night. Uh, so I'd imagine they've got them made and they're probably the best sellers right now. 
That's my guess. If it just says her name, they'll do all right. If it's got a picture of her on, WWE are just a t-shirt company now. So that's all they'll be. That's how they'll make their money. Just selling Lopez t-shirts. Uh, Moldy Spoon said, Days, when you watch football, does it make you want to play? Every time I watch football, I debate about playing again. Uh, does it make me want to play? Not particularly. Uh, I suppose in a way it makes me... I would love to be in a five-a-side team. I'd love that. I think, I think, you know, there's things that you know, I'm saving up what I can to get, like, my own place and, you know, obviously furnishings and all that kind of stuff. So I've been saving for a good couple of years now. So I'm I'm saving up really for, for that. But I think once I get, like, my own place and uh, I'm kind of a bit more settled and whatever, then I would love to try and uh, get into, like, a five-a-side team. I would, I'd be doing it really for fitness, but yeah, I just, I love playing as well. I mean, I'd love to do that. You know, just meet up with some people on a Sunday or summer, play the game, have a drink after. Sounds great. So I don't, I don't really look at this. I mean, I, 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 I'm not good enough. I've never been good enough to play outfield. Um, when I was at school, I, I got into it too late. I I didn't I didn't start playing football till I was about twelve, and I, I kind of think that you need to be playing when you're younger than that. To be honest, if you're going to be like decent at football, you need to be really playing when you're like six, seven, eight. Um, but I didn't. I never played when I was at primary school. I started playing when I was at secondary school. I had to. Every boy in my year, and there were hundreds. Uh, hundreds and hundreds, um, only played football. That's all we did. As soon as the bell went, everyone ran outside and played football. And because I'd never played, I got chucked in goal, uh, which I was fine with. I just wanted to, you know, I just wanted to be allowed to join in, really. Uh, so I was fine with going in goal. Um, and then, of course, I started watching Schmeichel. That's how I got into United. And, um, yeah. Just went from there. Uh, here come uh, Poland whipping the ball across, but they end up sending it out. Very poor by Poland. A couple of minutes to go. Uh, I'm a keeper, but I'm a great uh, central defensive midfielder as well. Oh, shot just wide by Spain. Just, just wide by Spain. Uh, there were only 15, there was only 15 own goals in 16 European Championships. I don't know if that includes this one. Wow. Ball played back to uh, goalkeeper. S pumped forward into the Spanish half, but there's no Slovakian players there. I mean, Spain have looked so comfortable. I wish England defended the way that Spain defend. They defend by having the ball, keeping possession, playing high up the pitch. We are into the dying seconds. Uh, four added minutes in the Spain-Slovakia game. Four added minutes. Retribution said, I loved playing five-a-side at school. We had a goals soccer centre. Oh, that's amazing. Right next to our school. So we always went there for PE. Really? That's cool. That's really cool. I didn't know that goals would do such a thing, to be honest. Allow uh, like people to go in and, and do that. So, yeah, that's really cool. Um... I've played at goals. There's a, there's a place in Birmingham called Star City. I mean, like anyone that lives in Birmingham or around the West Midlands will have, will know of Star City. Um, it's a place that's just out of the town centre, but it's like an entertainment complex. And there's not many of them in around, really. But it's 
it's very unique it's it's kind of it's quite american actually it's kind of like out on its own it's on an industrial park but it's got a goals which is like a five a side place so lots of little pitches it's got one of them it's got a cinema it's got a arcade where you've got like arcade machines and you can play like air hockey and uh, do little bits and bobs. It it used to have a few shops. It might still have some shops actually, but it used to have a few shops around as well. It's got a casino. It's got Subway. It had K. I think it's still got KFC. I think it had KFC. Have I just made up KFC? I don't even know anymore. Uh, I think there's KFC there. Um, but it's got a Subway. Um, it's got a gym. It's just like this whole like complex. It's amazing. And I used to go there a lot to play uh, on that uh, goals, that five side. That was in Birmingham. Uh, headed away. Booted away. Spain trying to play it back in. And oh, he's done well to get that. Plays it across. Headed in. And it's a second goal. Second goal for Spain. That was really well worked. They didn't give up there. They didn't give up. That's a second goal for Spain. Yeah, Dubravka. Dubravka's having a bit of a mare here. He comes out to get the ball and he doesn't get it. The ball is then played over and it's just headed in. Are things clicking for Spain? Are Spain finally arriving at this tournament? Is that what we're starting to see now? Look, just doesn't give up. Plays the ball across. Headed back. And Dubravka's just all lost at sea, isn't he? He's all lost at sea. He doesn't know. He doesn't quite know where he is. Ah, oh, feel for him, man. He's having one of them days, Dubravka. It's a shame because he saved that penalty earlier. Great. Really good. Still 1-0. Um, and that's gonna that's surely going to be it for this half. 2-0. Two, two uh, I want Rafa to be England's next manager. Apparently he's looking for a job, says uh, Retribution. Ah, oh, it's difficult. It's difficult because I think we need someone that is going to... Um, 40... 48th minute that was um we need someone that's going to understand and embrace like st george's park and the work that's being done so we do need someone that's got good tactical awareness but we need someone that's going to embrace um st george's park and how the younger teams feed into the senior team and I think there's quite a bit of I think there's quite a bit more to be an England manager than there has been for a while. It's not just like the tactic side, it's about the whole development of players and uh, St George's Park and you know uh, the the togetherness of the group as well was has always been a problem. Um and uh you know Southgate's worked a lot on that. So my concern would be if we bring in a foreign manager, I'm sure they're going to be great at tactics, but what about some of that other stuff that goes with it? Because we're seeing great results with uh, what we're doing with uh, youth development. Um, you know, St. George's Park has been a, a, a real positive step forward for us. And obviously some of our younger sides have uh, started, you know, getting great results. And I, my understanding is that the England manager, Southgate, actually meets with the other managers on quite a regular basis to ensure that those teams below play the same way as the national team so that when players are coming through, it's it's seamless, it's effortless, it flows, it works. There's a good line where, you know, if you play, if you play in that formation for the under-21s, it's because when you get called up, you're going to be playing a similar way. So my concern would be that someone would come in and start, you know, changing all of that. Cause I feel like that's a good positive way forward, to be honest. So I don't know if it needs to be an England, an English person that's got a bit like a grasp of all of that. I mean, like I, 
I'm sure someone could come in like Benitez and could still do that. But I think for me, that would be a big part of the interview process. If I was interviewing for the next England manager, I would want to know, you know, what their playing style was going to be. What's their plan for the next few years? How are they going to help with development? What, what do they see their role being in regards to St. George's Park and how they fit in with the other sides, the youth sides? And I'd want those answers. So he could be good. He could be good. He could be great. But I think the interview process is going to be really important for the next England manager. Uh, Champaz said Rafa would be good for England because England don't attack much. He likes to sit back. Uh, uh, that's why you fail. You need someone dedicated to winning football matches. Well, I, w I would disagree because that's... We failed for a long time. We failed since the uh, 1960s. This what we're doing now is actually something different. We have St George's Park hasn't been open all that long, and um, the success that our young sides have had again is you know 2017, 2018, 2019. So any any failure that we've experienced in the past has got nothing to do with what we've just spoke about. What we've just spoke about is something that we're actually trying now to improve the quality of the players that are coming through. You know, for a long time, we would look at Europe and we'd be like, we don't have an Iniesta, we don't have a Xavi, we don't have those technical players. Why do we not have those technical players? Where are they? And, you know, it was established that the the, the systems are just not good enough. The, 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 the academies are not good enough. So, you know, St. George's Park was brought in as a way to kind of really bring everything together. Um, and I think it's been a fantastic success. I think it's been brilliant. And that has shown in our youth sides. And it's, and it's showing in this tournament. We've got one of the youngest squads. So I wouldn't want someone to come in and just be focused on football and throw all that other stuff away. Because I think we are reaping the rewards of the work that's been done there. Look at look at the players that are coming through. Look at the quality of those players that are coming through. Look at Foden. Look at, you know, Saka. Look at Greenwood. Look at, you know... It's easy to just say this is... Um, yeah, this is just a good crop of players. This is just an, a golden generation. It's easy to say that, but... There's a lot of work that's gone on behind the scenes to get us where we are. There's There's actually a lot more going on than what it seems. So... I think it's important that we don't throw that away and abandon that plan personally. I want to see I want to see that continue because I'm quite excited by some of the results that are coming out of it. So, yes, a good tactical manager is important. Whoever the next manager is is important, but there's enough time for them to still be able to do that and support St James um, St George's Park and work with the uh, younger sides and see who's coming through and uh, all of that side of it as well. Uh, the St. George's Park plant has been in action for 10 years and it's still failing. Uh, I, well, I have to disagree. I mean, all I can do is point to the fact that England are ranked fourth in the world right now, got to the semi-finals of the last World Cup, uh, were one of the favourites uh, for this World Cup as well. Crop of players that we've got, I think, is very impressive. And... Um, I don't think you can look at St. Uh, George's Park and, and call it a failure at all. I think that it's been a positive step forward. Uh, looking forward to the Portugal versus France game. It's going to be good, man. It's going to be good. Uh, can't wait for the next games. They're all, it's all going to be very, uh, very exciting. Uh, Southgate brought a young player, but he isn't using them until the last game, and he isn't using Harry Kane properly, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, it's fine to have criticisms against Southgate. Um, he, it's I, it's understandable. Like, England have not had the swagger that you would expect or hope to see. But I, th I do believe that Southgate, who works with these players week in, week out, is aware as to where they are and aware of what they're capable of doing and I think that he is playing the team and the formation that he thinks gets the most out of this squad so 
I've got confidence in him. I really don't believe that he's useless or or anything like this. We've had some decent results, um, and he's done a decent job. And uh, as we said, you know, we got to the semi-final of a World Cup. I appreciate that. Um, and people might look at that and go, yeah, but that was that was easy. Um, you know, you had an easy route and all this kind of stuff. But don't forget, we then got to the semi-finals of the Nations League. So you know, that wasn't that wasn't easy. We had Croatia who knocked us out in in our group. Uh, and we had to get through that, and we got to the final of the Nations League. We've had some big friendly victories, like the three-two win over Spain, which was a really good result as well. This has all been in, in the past couple of years, um, and we we have played some big nations. I mean, we've played France and big big teams in friendlies as well, and uh, got decent results. So I think that uh, England right now are doing what they feel they need to do to get through the group, and uh, we'll see what they do in the knockout rounds. It's difficult. Like I personally wouldn't be judging them until we're out. And I know it's easy to say, yeah, but by that point, it's too late. But equally, we could go on to win this next game. We could go, he could he could make a few little tweaks and changes. We could improve our set plays. Um, you know, he can uh, obviously look at some different personnel now. It looks like Henderson's able to play. Maguire's back. Um, so there's a few there's a few little tweaks and changes that he can make. Um, and uh, he said as well, which was quite interesting in the post post-match interview he said that um all three games are going to prove different challenges so regardless of whether you know we play portugal we play germany we play france they, they all present different challenges which sort of suggested to me that there might be some slight differences in how he approaches the games like the formation the personnel so we'll see we'll see how it goes i've got high hopes it's at wembley and I think we can do it. We've played we've played good, good teams at Wembley and got good results in uh, recent years. So I'm still keeping my confidence high. Uh, I would love to have seen Salah in an England team. He's uh, Egyptian. Uh, maybe we need players with flying powers. Maybe. Uh, would you like Lampard to be England's next manager? Um, I would interview him. If I was the FA, I didn't interview him. Oh, well, I didn't interview anyone that was interested. And I, I honestly, if I can only go back to what I said before, I think that whoever gets the job is the right person. I think if um, I think there'll be a few people that'll go for it because I don't think being England manager is as horrific as it used to be. I think um, you know we didn't used to have uh, like great cropper players. Uh, I said before, even the golden generation, once you got rid of that that top layer, the rest of the squad wasn't that great. And I kind of feel that the 23, 26 that we've got now, is just it's all strong. Anyone can come in and, and do a job. Like, we've got really good depth in the squad. We've got people we can bring off a bench that can change a game. It's been a long, long time since England had that. So not only do we have good players right now, great players um we've got a lot of them we've got a really good squad and look at who got left out no Wambasaka. i would have loved Wambasaka. greenwood uh you know would would have been there or thereabouts people upset that ward prowse uh, didn't go people upset that lingard didn't go uh, and these are players that completely missed out you know these are players that 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 didn't play at all um weren't in the squad at all so i think the squad we've got is uh really good um, and, uh, yeah, I think Lampard, if, if he, uh, interviews and, you know, has got a good vision for how to take us forward, then yeah, I'd support it. He could, he could be good. Uh, Vincent O says F in the chat for Poland. Uh, I'll put an F in the chat. I'll do that. I want Poland to, uh, go through. Uh, there have been 16 own goals in Euros history. Seven of them have been in this tournament. All oh, right, so that does include this tournament. That's in that's insane, isn't it? If you haven't seen the goal, I'm hoping that they will show it. I'm hoping that they will show it. 
because the ball hits the crossbar. So the way it, the way it goes is there's a shot from outside the penalty area, hits the crossbar, bounces up into the air, then it starts falling vertically back down, and the goalkeeper is standing watching the ball as it's coming back down, and he's trying to time it, and he palms it. He's trying to palm it over the goal, so he's going to give away a corner. Basically, he just wants to, he wants to just get it out the way. So the ball's coming down, and he palms it. But rather than it hitting here and him palming it over, it hits here and it palms it in. And so it goes like that and the ball hits off there and bounces into the goal. It's an own goal by the goalkeeper after he palms it into his own goal. I seriously can't remember ever seeing a goal like it before. So if you've not seen uh, the first Spain goal, tr try and find it if you can because it really is... Um, something so wacky and wonderful um uh we're talking about the hungry squad uh i think lampard would be a good fit for england manager says uh, chompas chris said usa women's football win gold in the olympics and men won't uh, I would like someone like Eddie Howe to get given the chance. I could see a lot of really good managers applying if when Southgate goes. I heard that Southgate, though, won't be going until at least after the World Cup. So whatever happens here, I think he's got the support of the FA. Uh, he's got through the group anyway. So if we do end up going out in the next round, then, you know, so be it. He still won't go. So uh, if you're, I think if you're sat there hoping that Southgate goes after the Euros, what I've heard is that he's definitely whatever happens around until after the World Cup next year. Uh, I'd like to see someone like Eddie Howe get given a chance. Yeah, he'd be good. He obviously, uh, you know, worked magic at Bournemouth, uh, leading a, a team up uh, through the divisions as he did. He was playing proper fantasy manager, wasn't he? <laughs> Uh, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Shout out to you, Nick. Right, we're about to get uh, back underway. Uh, when is the next World Cup? Next year, I think. I think it's like next winter. So just over uh, uh, like 12 months time. Well, maybe pushing more. Maybe pushing more 18 months time. It's a weird one because it's in Qatar. So, because it's in uh, Qatar, which is obviously a very, very hot country, they're not doing it in the summertime. They're doing it in the winter time. So, I still don't quite get how the season's going to work that year. It's going to be, it's going to be quite the disruption. It's going to be so strange. Um, but obviously, uh, FIFA will have worked all that out when they awarded the World Cup to Qatar. Uh, Days, don't say that. Don't give me hope and then put me down by saying Southgate will stay. I, I don't mind him. I really don't mind him. I understand people that, that don't rate him. I get it. I see I see the teams he picks, you know. I mean, I was quite enthusiastic for yesterday's game and then I saw the, the two defensive midfielders and I was like, oh. oh. And even I was like, oh. Felt like a gut punch. Because as soon as I saw them two defensive midfielders, you go... He's not going for this. He's playing defensively. And honestly, I said earlier, if you're going to play defensively against um, Czech Republic when you've already qualified, you're not going to go attacking in the knockout games, are you? So he does play defensive, safe football. That is who he is, and it's going to be boring for people. And I can totally understand people not wanting to watch it and, and feeling bored. My only counterpoint would be, what if it works? <laughs> what if he wins all the games 1-0? What if we go to extra time and sneak a goal or we get penalty shootouts? And... So I'm going to judge it. I'll judge it after the tournament. Uh, James said, World Cup near Christmas time. That's going to be so weird. Miss Clown said, can't forget those, Austin. I loved picking a new ball as a kid. 
Yeah, do you, do you remember the uh, plastic balls that used to float when you used to kick them? Like they used to like float in the air. I, I don't. I know that's maybe not something that you have in like America, but if you go to like a seaside town or a camping site or something like that in the UK, you know, you go to the sea like the seaside or and you want to like play football on the beach or you want to play football in a camping site or you know whatever and you're a kid of course you can get these balls that are like a pound and they're just plastic balls plastic spheres whatever right but they suck i think they're known as floaters i think the balls are known as amongst kids as floaters they certainly were when i was a kid because you would kick it i mean it was a ball and if it if it wasn't windy at all then you might be able to do something with it but the problem is you'd kick it and any breeze and it would be gone do you know what i mean you'd play with it and you'd like try and score and the wind would blow and you'd watch the ball in the air like <laughs> zipping across or whatever as the wind was carrying it and if it was a really windy day you could be like running and like you could kick it into the air and the wind would just be like and it would just be like over there somewhere and you'd be like oh my god this sucks. This really sucks. Those they were they were awful. Never, never played with one of them balls at lunchtime ever. They're the kind of, they're the kind of thing that sell really well because if you just haven't got any kind of ball, then um, you know something's better than nothing. But uh, yeah, they sucked. Uh, they're hard on the knees. Uh, Miss Clown, those footballs suck, says James Chat. They do, don't they? Uh, Vincent O said the World Cup is the 21st of November to the 18th of December. Guys, imagine that. England are going to win the World Cup seven days before Christmas in 2022. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that exciting? England are winning the World Cup just seven days before Christmas in 2022. Spanish player goes down and they're uh, protesting for a penalty. Nothing given. Uh, Poland with a shot and the ball goes wide. Uh, would you like Man U to come out to the NWO theme tune? No. I don't want any football players coming out to wrestling theme tunes. I hate this. I think it sucks. It's just something to go on social media. I don't like wrestling theme tunes are for the wrestlers and for wwe i don't need teams coming out to to wrestling theme tunes doesn't really really does not do it for me i mean if you wanted to go all american or whatever then every individual player like all 11 could have their own theme tunes ladies and gentlemen your lineup for this evening number one david and then David De Gea, left back this evening, making his way out, it's Luke Shaw! That might be cool. At the start of a match, all 22 players come out to their own little theme song. But I don't need wrestling ones. Uh, Austin said, England should come out to uh, Hulk Hogan's theme song. <laughs> bum, 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 ba -da -da -da, when it comes crashing down and it hurts inside. <laughs> I am a real American. Fed for the rights of every man. Yeah, it's cringe. Uh, darts on TV isn't popular in America, but we have lots of leagues. Uh, for any friends with COVID out there, use vitamin C tablets after meals to boost immunity. Uh, vitamin C is meant to be, I haven't heard that, but um, just it's meant to be amazing, isn't it? For like uh, immune systems and whatever. You can get like just vitamin vitamin C tablets. There's nothing really. It's just like orange, really. You get vitamin C in orange. Right, still uh, one nil. Not much in the way of chances at the moment. We're uh, five minutes in. 
extreme football wrestling. Uh, you should have a yellow and red card thing. I've got a red card ready to go. If uh, if there is a red card, then uh, I do have it right there look, on standby. Little thing that I can put wherever I need to put it. But yellow, yellows are a little bit... There's quite a few of them each game, so I don't really bother with yellows. But red card is on standby. Uh, I dislocated my knee playing five uh, aside for footballing school. No way. That sounds awful. <laughs> and painful. Right, so uh, Poland are knocking on the door. Looking to play a shot in. Ball to the back goes wide. Lewandowski was looking for a penalty there. Referee not interested. Hard to see uh, Slovakia getting anything out of this. I mean... They have had the one shot now, but that's one shot to 13. So Spain with 13 shots, Slovakia with one. Uh, and obviously there's that two goal cushion. So this is looking very, very good for Spain. Uh, not looking great for Poland. Um, obviously they need to get some goals and, you know, against a, a well-disciplined Sweden side, that's going to be very, very difficult for them to do. Uh, are you going to stream Portugal versus France, says Chloe. Uh, yes, we will be doing that. Uh, I think as soon as this finishes, we are pretty much going over to another stream. Um, I don't know. I'll have to have a look. I mean, obviously, it'll just take me a moment just to change a couple of things. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that is what we're doing today. We're doing um, two streams. Uh, this uh, Group E is this. Is this Group E? Group E. And then uh, the group of death next, group F. So, uh, yeah, we've got both uh, both streams today. And that'll be it then. I mean, oh, I wanted to look at that. How are the, how are the group three... Hang on. How are third place teams sorted at Euro 2020? Let's, uh, let's have a quick read of this. Third place teams. Does third place qualify? Does third place qualify? Uh, there's currently a table of third place teams, which is interesting. Uh, that was from the start of the day. Uh, teams can still qualify in third place. Uh, so, it's points first, then it's goal difference, then it's goals scored, then it's number of wins, and so on, so on, so on. Different options in the round point for But it doesn't say how that's decided. Four best teams are. Wow, this is complicated. <laughs> oh, I get it. Oh, I get it. I get it. Uh, WWE Central says I'm playing FIFA right now. Uh, to give me a match to play. Right. Uh, WWE Central, shout out to you. Don't have to keep super chatting, bud. Can comment without super chatting. Shout out to you, dude. Right, this is a table that I found, okay, which is quite interesting, and I would love it if it would focus. So there, you can see if the four best third place teams, if the four best third place teams are from um, A, B, C, and D, right at the top, then uh, the winner of B would play the third place team of A. The winner of C would play the third place team of D. The winner of E, I'm just looking along that top row. Can you see how the table works? Spain have scored again. It's another goal for Spain. So yeah, um if you take the if you take the one at the top, A, B, C, D. So if the third best teams 
in third if sorry if the fourth best third placed teams were from groups a b c d then the winner of b will play uh 3a the winner of c will play 3d the winner of e will play 3b the winner of f will play 3c it's a bit complicated but that's the table basically uh that table sucks I'm going to tweet this out because I think that's interesting. That interests me. Ball played across, tapped in, hits the post, simple stuff. And I, I tell you the concern here, have Spain arrived? This is now 3-0 to Spain. Have Spain arrived in this tournament? Looks confusing. It is a little confusing, but I do get it. Uh, I didn't see who scored it. We'll get that uh, info now. It was uh, Sarabia. Uh, Spain is killing it. Yeah, well, they've been very impressive in their games. They just haven't had an end product. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm gonna tweet that table out because I think I've not seen that and people might find it quite interesting. For those wondering how third place will work, it depends what group the best third place teams come from table below should help yeah i think people will really find that quite interesting because i have i had no idea and i haven't heard anyone really talking about it either so um it's a good thing to find. Boom. Poland is completely outplaying Sweden, but they're still losing, and they're losing bad. It's a second goal. Second goal for Sweden, and uh, that might be it for Poland now. That might be it for Poland. It was a shot by um, one of the Polish players in Sweden's half, and it's a counter-attack. Uh, Sweden break down the uh, right-hand side, um, cut into the penalty box, and uh, it's a lovely shot right near the edge of the penalty box, right into the bottom corner. And it's uh, it's Forsberg again, you know. Forsberg again, is that his third goal in three matches? Depending who Sweden are going to get, they're going to get a third. Sweden will get a third-place side. Whoever they're going to get, you might want to look at Sweden for your fantasy team. Forsberg in particular looks looks kind of tasty right now. Uh, after these two games, will you find out who in the knockout rounds you have or have to wait a little longer? Have to wait a little longer. England, England are playing the next group. And unfortunately, we're going to have to wait a little bit longer... As to who the third place teams are as well. Because the next group. Although saying that. We might know by the end of this. We might we might be able to know now. It depends if this is going to stay this way. Goal by. Wow. Poland have got one back. Lewandowski. Lewandowski scores for Poland. It's a beautiful shot as well. Beautiful shot. Lewandowski. Yeah, look at that Polish fan in the stands. Lewandowski with a fantastic goal. Oh, it's beautiful as well. It's a beautiful goal. Goals are flying in. There's goals everywhere. Goals galore. That's what we've got.
Poland have scored? Yeah, that's amazing. Okay, well, mm, are they dead? Mm, maybe not. That goal's so, so important. I mean, they've got to go at this now. They've really got to go at this. I think, what do they need? They still need three goals. Yeah, I mean, they're not Portugal. So I wouldn't wait till like the 84th minute. Ball out to the right-hand side. Whipped into the center. Edge of the box, trying to cut inside. Sweden uh, managing to uh, put a tackle in. Uh, Days, are you going to have AEW on in the background during UFC? If not, that's cool. I, I, I haven't looked to see how it works, to be honest. I think UFC is on a, earlier, so it might be UFC ends as AEW begins. Goals are us. William, shout out to you. Uh, well taken goal. Golden ball settings. Ball whipped into the center. And uh, no joy there for Poland. Frustration by Lewandowski, who was trying to get his head on it. And he does get his head on it, but he can only knock it back. But there was no one behind him. Uh, anyway, we could qualify SmackDown. Right. Uh, Spain are cruising here, aren't they? Two shots on target for Slovakia. They're, they're causing Spain no problems whatsoever. I feel like Spain have really got this in the bag. And they're just passing it around uh, their back line, to be honest. Uh, keeping ball and they've done their job. Spain, if they'd have lost here, were going out. But they've just been irresistible. Just been uh, absolutely brilliant. So, eyes are turning a little bit more to Sweden and Poland right now. That seems to have more of the drama. Uh, Poland are uh, on the ball at the moment in Sweden's half. Break into the right-hand side. Looking to try and whip a ball in. They do put the ball in. Headed away by Sweden. Goes back into the Polish half. Uh, AEW is on Saturday night, 9 till 11 Eastern, 8 till 10 Central. Played across. Edge of the box. Goes through a shot. No joy. Uh, hi, babes. Looking very pretty today. It says Forsaken is back. Shout out to you. Forsaken is back. Yeah, Spain Spain could be Spain could be a real problem. Spain could be a problem if things have started clicking for them. They will play a third place side. I want to see I'm going to see, right? I'm going to be quite ambitious here. I'm going to see if I can work out who is going to be the third place teams and if so, who is going to play who in the next round? Euro 2020 third place table there must be a live third place table unfortunately there doesn't look like there is a third place table at the moment right well we've got third places there at the moment what is the Spain table let's have a look uh, UFC finishes at 12.30 Dynamite starts at 1.00 Right, let's have a look at group E Euro. Uh, Austin someone is hitting days again. Uh, goal Poland disallowed. Mm, still showing us two one. Is is it actually disallowed? The referee is just seemingly checking. Slovakia, two, minus two. Yeah, so it looks like that has been uh, disallowed. 
so this is so difficult to try and work this out because all of the all of the goals make a big big difference every goal that slovakia is conceding is a problem for them so slovakia really can't be conceding as many goals here as they have so latest latest standings has got them Another goal has gone in for Spain. Another goal has gone in for Spain. Looks like that's going to be a goal for uh, Torres. They are looking absolutely irresistible here, Spain. They are looking absolutely deadly right now. And it is uh, Ferran Torres. Managed to score in the uh, 66th minute. It's a it's goal fest 2021. Says Tall Paul. That's what we're watching right now. Goal fest 2021. I'm having to make the goal scorers smaller because I can't fit them on the screen. Yeah, I mean, right now, right now, right now, Switzerland and Czech Republic are definitely through. I mean, they're looking really, really good because all the other groups have only got three points. Their third place teams have only got three points, uh, whereas Czech Republic and Switzerland have both got four points. So Switzerland are looking good and uh, Czech Republic are looking good. So they seem to be almost certainly two of the four sides and uh i think that you can you can add someone from the group of death to that as well to be honest because i mean portugal are on three points right now if they lose to france then they would stay on three points but their goal difference looks okay Depends how much they lose by. But I think Group A is definitely going to have a team in. And Group E is definitely going to have a team in. And right now, because the goals keep flying in, it's hard to work out the rest. Because, as we said, every goal keeps changing things. Uh, Slovakia are playing terrible, says James Chadwick. Brad G says, stop the match. Slovakia has got a family, damn it. Uh, Days, you're getting all the ladies saying hubba. I'm not sure any lady has ever actually said that. And if they have, they should be appalled with themselves. Absolutely disgusted with themselves. Uh, right, we are... How long have we got? 20 minutes to go. 20 minutes to go. Uh, this morning around 7, I broke out into song. See, that watch me. They wandered off individually. That's a true story, says William. Well, that's nice. Sometimes it's good to break into song, William. Why not? Little spring in your step. Uh, Gary said four goals is the most in a match for one side. Can they get any more? Well, with 20 minutes still to go, you would think it's looking good for them, yes? I mean, this is scary from Spain because they have dominated... I mean, they've had 65% uh, possession. They've passed. They've worked. They've they've been... I mean, if we saw a heat map, just constantly been in Slovakia's half, Slovakia's uh, part of the pitch would be bright red because the ball has just constantly been in and around that kind of penalty area, Slovakia's half. They've been deadly. Yeah, Pau Torres coming on now. So, yeah, I kind of feel that uh, it's a bit of a concern, this, from Spain. Tell you what, though, if you think about how great Spain are and you think about how great Italy have played and you think about how great Belgium are with uh, De Bruyne coming back, you think about what you've seen from Germany and you think about um, France being the world champions, 
Um, Netherlands have been banging goals in. Like, you look at these teams. Oh, save, and it's another, it's a fifth. It's a fifth, it is a fifth. Uh, is Pal can Pal Torres claim it? Is that going to be a Pal Torres goal? So, Ferran Torres has scored, and Pal Torres. Spain have got five. This is insane. We are watching uh, what a performance this is. We're just going to see, are they going to give it to Pal? Ball bounces up. Oh, I don't think it will be Pal. Might hit off a Slovakian player before it goes over the line. I think I think that's an own goal. Yeah, that's an own goal. That's not go that you can't give that to Pal. Uh five nil, yeah. Own goal, I think it's an own goal. Yeah, they've given it to uh, Kuka. Kuka. Well, this is the most goals we've seen in one game in this championships. And 5-0 uh, to Spain. 29th minute. 48th, 56th, 66th, 71 and uh, this could be a this could be I mean this is heartbreaking for Slovakia anyway. Slovakia who have been so sound have just been worn down, battered, they're bruised, they're hurt in, they're a wounded animal. Spain just keep on coming. 17 shots Spain have had. 9 on target. And let's not forget that a penalty was saved. This could be 6-0 very, very easily. This could should be 6-0. Uh, eight own goals in this tournament now. Oh, yeah, the own, go the own goals keep going up. Most goals at tournament is Spain, says Gary. Can I just remind you that so far in this tournament, England have scored twice. In this whole tournament, England have scored twice. It's coming home. It's coming home. It's coming home. It's coming home. It's coming. That's right. England. Old England, two goals in three games. Spain, five in flipping 70 minutes. Uh, Days, do you know if Brock beats Bobby for the title at SummerSlam, we will be getting Roman versus Brock at Survivor Series. Uh, both from Sterling as well, says Harley. Yeah, that's true. Uh, looking bad for Poland, obviously. 74th minute, coming up to the 75th minute. I think they are definitely running out of time. Could there be another one? Could this be a 6-0 Spain? I mean, what a confidence boost this is for Spain. That, that Spain just haven't been able to score goals. And certainly have now. Yeah, this is a big statement. Do you think Scotland would have got past Slovakia? Uh, I think you would have had a chance. I think you would have had a chance. Is that who you... Is that who you wouldn't have played then, would you? If you'd have, if you'd have finished third in Group D... Oh, this is the problem, isn't it? This is, this is what's so annoying about this third place thing. Normally, in a normal tournament, you can sit here and go, you know, right, if you finish second, you're going to play this team. If you finish first, you play this team. You just know. This whole third place thing, now we don't know until all the groups are done. But you wouldn't have played you wouldn't have played Slovakia anyway. You would have played the top team if you finished third. 
Uh, Slovakia pretty much out. Tell you what, that's heartbreak for them. They were second going into today. They were second in the group. And now they've just been smashed 5-0. And it looks like they are getting uh, sent out. I mean, you can't... When, when goals and goal difference is so important, you can't be getting smashed 5-0. Chris says, here comes the Slovakia comeback. Bembo said, we're all supporting Hungary tonight. I'm not supporting Hungary tonight. No way am I supporting Hungary tonight. I am cheering for Germany and Portugal. I think that's what I want, isn't it? Group F. Let's have a look at Group F. Because I do need to work out what I'm cheering for. Let's have a look at Group F. Group F. So, Hungary on one point. Portugal on three. Germany on three. France on four. So, if Germany and Portugal win, then that means Portugal finish second. So that's what I want. I want Portugal. If I have, if I can pick a team, I'll pick I'll pick Portugal. So I want Germany to win. That's possible. Portugal winning is possible. Uh, Miss Clown says, "Come on, Hungary. Why do you want Hungary? Why do you want Hungary to win?" Hang on. Why I don't get why people are cheering for Hungary here. Group F Euro just knocked it off. Let me go back to it and try and work out why people are cheering for Hungary because that makes no sense. If Hungary win, they'll be on four points. Germany will be on three. Are you trying to see Germany out? If Hungary beat Germany and France beat Portugal, Hungary will be second. If Hungary beat Germany and France beat... Put well, that would be the better plan, yes. Hungary beats Germany. Which ain't going to happen, is it? Let's be honest. Hungary beats Germany and... What's the other one we need? France France beating Portugal is possible. France beats Portugal. Then England will play Hungary. Yeah, okay, I can go with that. All right, yeah, I'm Team Hungary. <laughs> I want Hungary to beat Germany now. But I don't, I don't see it happening. Uh, Spain have got the fastest player alive in uh, Adam Traore. Uh, we would face them next. Not true. If Hungary beat Germany and France Portugal's a draw, we wouldn't get Hungary. Yeah, if Hungary if if Hungary uh beat Germany, it still depends on the France Portugal game as to whether well, who England play. But yes, Hungary would have to win in order for them to even stand a chance of getting second place. Uh, how long we got? 10 minutes to go. Uh, Germany all the way. Yeah, I don't want you guys. Of all the te in, of all the teams in that, I do not want Germany the most. Uh, I don't care about Hungary. I just am Hungary. Uh, if Hungary wins and France wins, then uh, you play Hungary. Got it now. But also, I must admit, I don't mind Germany winning and Portugal winning. If Germany win and Portugal win, we get Portugal. And I'll take that as well. Playing Portugal at Wembley. You've, you know, I'll take that. They look, they look beatable. They got smashed 4-2 by Germany. We would have to deal with Ronaldo, but we've faced him before. Spain with the ball. 
to the back post. No one there. Uh, okay, Amir, I'm good, thank you. Shout out to you. Oh, ball played across. And uh, no one there. Uh, hungry aren't my sweepstake team. Okay. So, Hungary beat Germany. France beat Portugal. We get Hungary. Uh, Germany beat Hungary and France. No, and Portugal beat France. We get Portugal. Either of them, please. Uh, Holland, I support my legs, my legs support me. Portugal versus England would be an amazing match, says Nick. I agree. It would be a, it would be a lot of fun, that would. Uh, quite close as well. I feel like those teams are quite close. I, I think I think that if I was to say England are similar to a team, not in the way they play, but just their chances of winning, truthfully, I think matching us with Portugal would make sense. I'm not sure we're at the level of an Italy or even a Spain after this performance. Italy, Spain, Germany. I don't know that Belgium have really impressed all that much, to be honest. I think Belgium have done well. But I can't say I'm looking at Belgium as winners of this at the moment. But you just, you never know in the knockout games, do you? We said before Portugal drew all three of their group games and they still went on to uh, win the tournament. So sometimes the group games don't give you an accurate read. 2-2, uh, Poland equalised. Uh, I've still got it at 2-1 at the moment. Uh, ball played for. I'll keep an eye. Ball played forward. I think I'm about 40 seconds behind. In the midfield. Played across to the left-hand side. Bit of space here. Quick. Surging forward onto the inside. Ball into the centre. Falls to Lewandowski and there it is. Yep. Yeah. 2-2. Two, two. So, uh, all of a sudden now, Sweden only getting one point. So, Spain are currently top. Sweden are second. Slovakia still third. Uh, Adam Troy is so fast that he just about beat Usain's Bolt 100 metre record. Who is England's best player? Um, England's best player. England's best player. <laughs> I mean, you would say Kane, but he's just not, he's not involved at the moment. So you can't really say Kane. I think that's a very difficult one to answer, to be honest. Uh, because I think our best player in the first game was Phillips. I think the best player in the second game was an English. I think the best player last night was Saka. Um... And across the three games, you might look at someone like Sterling. You might look at someone like Stones. I think Stones has been an unsung hero. Pickford's been pretty solid, but hasn't really had to do a great deal. So, actual, factually, in the game so far, who's England's best player? I might give the nod to someone like Stones, Pickford, Sterling. But um, none of them have had, like, really standout performances. And uh, actually, actual man of the matches have gone to Saka and Phillips. So, quite a few. Uh, there's no, there's not really been, like, a standout performer. We don't have, like, someone that's carrying the team, if that makes sense. There's no one that's really pulling the strings for England. Uh, England's best player is their mascot. Uh, Tall Paul said one more goal and Poland will still get third. There's hope. 
Well, they get third because of how horrific, like, this battering has been for Slovakia. Yeah, Slovakia are losing. If Poland, if Poland win, they would get third. But I don't know if third would be enough, to be honest. Goes out to the left-hand side. Uh, we've got about uh, five minutes to go. Uh, at least all the shirtless fat men have shaved their bellies. It makes it more visually pleasing. Credit to them for that effort. I, honestly, I can't say, Nathaniel, that I've ever seen one of the shirtless fat guys in the stands and thought, well, at least that's visually pleasing. But I'm pleased, Nathaniel, that you feel comfortable to admit to that on the internet in front of everyone that's joining us here right now. Uh, Nick says Portugal's Ronaldo versus England's Stones. Uh, they will each score three goals. Uh, James Chadwick said at least England are still in it. They're still in it. And what I, what I genuinely take encouragement from is the fact that we've got about a week. Do you know what I mean? It's not in a few days. Like Southgate has got a little bit of time to prepare for this game because we don't actually play until the Tuesday. And so that's an advantage. You know, we've got a couple of rest days and then we've got Saturday, Sunday, Monday and the game is Tuesday. So there's a, a whole weekend. There's a whole weekend for England to, you know, really take a look at the games that whoever we're going to play have played. Get a plan together. Get the right team on the pitch. And look, what will be will be. If England are going to go through playing at Wembley... Having had all that time to prepare, you, you can't ask for anything better. We, we can make excuses till the cows come home, like Kane's not on form. Mount's, you know, having to got COVID, having to self-isolate, chill well as well, blah, 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 blah. Bottom line is, we can't have asked for much more. Yes, an easier draw would have been lovely, but we knew long ago it wasn't going to be easy. Couple of minutes uh, left to go as uh, Poland are still searching, they're still battling, still trying. England only scored two goals and they're still in it. That is crazy. That is true, actually, when you think about it. Not only is that crazy that they're still in it, they topped the group. <laughs> they topped the group. They finished top of the group. By scoring two goals. Uh, if Poland get one more, then they're through. Is that true? They'd be in third place, wouldn't they? Tension at the end. Are you good at football? I'm all right in goal. I'm all right in goal. I'm a decent goalkeeper in like a five aside, but not... I, I, I never really play like, um, I never really play uh, full-size football. Uh, it's not how you start, it's how you finish, says Diego. Poland still searching. Ball played into the centre. No one in there. You've got to think that Poland will get one more chance, at least. It's kept in by uh, Chesney. They've got five minutes. Poland have got five minutes. Ball is over on the left-hand side. Cut onto the inside. Ball into the centre. Goes over. Five added minutes for Poland. Uh, yes, got tied with Simon, but they're second as they beat them. Oh, that would be interesting. That would be very interesting. So Poland, if they win this, would actually go second. Yeah, wow, yeah. I didn't think of that. I thought you was pushing for third. But yeah, you'd go second. Oh, come on, Poland. Come on, Poland. Come on, Lewandowski. 
Right, all the drama is in the Poland game right now. We know that Spain have won this. Right, 5-0, three minutes to go, but Poland have got four minutes to get a goal. If they can get a goal, they are through. Sweden are having to defend for their lives. If Sweden... If Sweden lose, I think they're going to uh, slip to third. Headed away. Kicked to the uh, wing. And I think the ball's gone out. Time's ticking away. Uh, Harley said Days has got a stream in 10 minutes. Wow. I'll try not to overrun him. I might have to just push that back 10 minutes or so. Drama, drama in the uh, Poland-Sweden game. 5-0 uh, to Spain. Wow, we have seen nine goals this evening. Nine goals. Ball played across Sweden. Firing it over. That would have uh, that would have ended it right there. Look at that shot. Right, ball into the midfield. Sweden are on the ball. Sweden are just looking to keep the ball here, but switches the plate. I can't keep it in, and the ball does go out. That's going to be a throw-in for Poland, but it's right back in their own half. Time ticking, just over two minutes for Poland to find a goal. If they can get it up to uh, Lewandowski... Sweden uh, on the ball. Poland uh, are leading a bit of a charm life. Sweden are in, and it's a goal for Sweden, and that's it. It's a goal for Sweden. And uh, Polish hearts are broken. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, Levend Lewandowski looks and um, shakes his head and that's it. Uh, ten goals. That is crazy. Uh. Tall Paul said, well played, Poland, but they just left it too late. Well, you know... At least they were fighting and there was a chance. There was a, you know, with just minutes to go in the group game, there was a chance that they could get through. But yeah, that's that's a tough one to take. Uh, Paul axed. I feel for the shirtless fat men in the crowd. They did so much work to represent. Diego said, well, that's only 10 goals and I missed all of them. There's been some pretty spectacular ones. Uh, there's been some pretty weird ones as well. And that is uh, the end of the game between uh, Spain and uh, Sweden. Uh, Sweden win the group. That sucks for Poland, says uh, Heather. Yeah, that game will be uh, coming to a close as well. And uh, the whistle has gone and uh, the Polish dream is over. So we will get uh, confirmation of how the group has ended. So it looks like Group A, Group E... Uh, are going to have their third place teams going through. So it looks like Switzerland and the Czech Republic are uh, looking really good to go through. I think they might even be guaranteed to be going through. I think they are guaranteed to go through. We're just waiting to see confirmation of how uh, this table has uh, finished. Uh, don't forget the missed penalty. It could have been more. There it is. So Slovakia minus five. Slovakia minus five. Goal difference. Three points. Uh, I don't know how many goals they scored. Uh, 
Spain. Spain finish second in the group. Wow. I mean, minus, minus five is not great. Minus five is not great at all for a goal difference. Uh, Poland will be back stronger than ever. So, group... I just want to have a look at group E. Group E table. Have we got a group E table anywhere? There's a lot of, like, having to work stuff out and keep an eye on stuff. It's very annoying. Uh, when was the last time England scored five? Pff, I don't think they've ever done it. I don't think England, England have ever scored five goals ever in their whole history. Uh, so Slovakia scored two. <laughs> so Slovakia scored two. They've got a goal difference of minus five and they've got uh, three points. So I think this is so far, this is going to be Czech Republic, Switzerland. I think Slovakia are out. Ukraine. Ukraine look like they could go through. I think Slovakia are out. So I think this is between Finland and whoever is going to be third in Group D. So I think that the th that three teams that are through are Czech Republic, Ukraine and Switzerland. And I think the final spot is between Finland and whoever is going to play uh, finish third in Group D. And I would favour whoever finishes third in Group D, to be honest. So I think we could be looking at Switzerland, Ukraine, Czech Republic and Portugal, Germany, France. Whoa. Not even away in Germany days. 5-0. Never. That wasn't the score, was it? It was 5-1, I think, wasn't it? Not even when we beat San Marino 7-1 in 93. Uh, the two opening games have been great. And now look at the games next today is awesome. It is awesome. Right. Uh, well, look, we're going to wrap up there because I'm actually I'm meant, I'm meant to be starting another stream now. But um, I just want 10 minutes just to change the graphics, get uh, a drink and all that. Uh, so I'll just be about 10 minutes and then we'll start the next stream. We can go through everything, hopefully try and get our heads around things. But... What a game that was. Five goals by Spain. Poland are out. Uh, Sweden topped the group. Spain are second. I, I'm 99% sure Slovakia are out. Right? It really looks to me like Czech Republic and Switzerland are through in third place because they both got four points. All the other teams are currently on three. So it looks like Czech Republic and Switzerland are through. It looks like the Ukraine are going to go through because they've got three points and their goal difference is only minus one. Um, Slovakia are on three points. Their goal difference is minus five, which is horrific. So this beating they've just taken has really hurt them. So Slovakia look like they're out. Finland are uh, three points and minus two goals. And we need to have a look and see what happens in this final group. So currently, I think uh, A, D and E, those groups have had their um, uh, teams go through. Because of the table that we found, um, and I've tweeted it out if you want to see it. Uh, because of the table that we found, we will know uh, by the end of this next game exactly who is through. We will know exactly who every team is playing um, obviously the TVs will probably uh, keep us up to date as well, but we, we've got that information. We can be ahead of the curve. So if you do want that information, if you do want to know who's playing who, if you go to the Wrestling Days um, Twitter account, you can see the table. And I think this is a very interesting table. Uh, it's right there. 
it tells you so the third placed teams the third place teams and it tells you if the four best third place teams are from those groups it tells you exactly who they're going to play so again just a quick reminder if the best third place teams are from groups a b c and d you can see the top row a b c and d if the third best teams come from those groups then the winner of b plays whoever was third in a the winner of c plays whoever was third in d the winner of e plays whoever is third from b and the winner of f plays whoever was third from c so there's a whole table for all the different outcomes so we need to know the groups that have the f the, the four best third placed teams little complicated i've got my head around it that is the table if you want to study it yourselves i've tweeted it out onto the wrestling days twitter but as we said we'll cross that bridge when we get to it uh we've got a few games uh coming up next in about a few minutes time so i'm gonna go and end now right awesome uh thanks a lot for watching i will see you all in a moment when we're live for what is sure to be a fantastic game of uh portugal versus france germany versus hungary who will england be playing we find out next bye for now <laughs>